Well, hello and a very warm welcome once again to the Halle Legionov in Kielce in Poland, where you join us for another session of boxing in the 2021 AIBA Youth World Boxing Championships for men and women. We are just moments away from the fifth session of boxing here on this third day of the tournament. And we've got a further 14 bouts to come. Women's action at light flyweight, bantamweight and welterweight before we conclude the second half of this 14-bout schedule with action from the men's 69-kilogram welterweight division. So the busiest session of the tournament so far, 14 bouts in prospect for boxers born between 2003 and 2004. In this, the second successive edition of the AIBA Youth World Boxing Championship staged with the men's and women's tournaments running concurrently in the same venue, just as it was in Budapest in the most recent edition prior to this one. So there then, we're taking a look at the schedule, which is due to occur here in ring A. Welterweight's the busiest bracket of the entire tournament. 36 athletes taking part. And in just a few moments time, the athletes will make their way through that TARDIS at the rear of the arena and into the boxing ring. And the first bout in action will feature a home representative facing off against a boxer from Ukraine. Well, my name is Ronald McIntosh. I'll be your commentator for the action taking place here in ring A. It's been a terrifically staged tournament. You get an idea from that beauty shot as to how the Halep Legionov has been dressed, ordinarily a venue for handball. But the local organizing committee and Aiba staging this using a COVID-19 safety protocol effectively. We're in a bubble here and see social distancing in effect when everybody regularly tested to ensure that, well, in the hope that no positive tests occur been fortunate in that respect so far, but again, that as a result, undoubtedly, of the stringent safety measures that have been put in place. Social distancing, plenty of hand sanitation, and the hygiene measures which have been suggested and outlined by health authorities around the world, all being followed strictly here. And it's a magnificent multi-purpose venue, this, mainly for handball can see from the climbing frames on the background if you've ever seen a sports venue in this part of the world where well, it's rather typical of those high arcing ceilings magnificent wooden supports visible fantastic lighting and then that has been embellished further and dressed specifically by the local organizing committee and Aiba who deserve immense credit for getting a global tournament up and running in safe fashion during the height of a global pandemic Of course, it means a tremendous amount to all of the boxers who are taking part. Ladies and gentlemen, bout number 94 in ring A. Women's light fly, 45, 48 kilograms. Into the red corner, please welcome boxer from Poland, Skutrzewska Natalia Dominika. And his opponent in the blue corner, representing Ukraine, Yuya Peleshuk. So the athletes in the 48 kilogram light flyweight division making their way towards the boxing ring for the opening bout of our Judge fifth Titans. session of boxing. Judge We've got judges Italy. from Italy, United Two. States of America, United Argentina, States. Scotland Three. and Argentina. Kyrgyzstan. Four. Scotland. The 10 point must Five. system in effect. Kyrgyzstan. Referee Ashok Kapilian Sai, India.
So there's the confirmation of the bout. That will get underway in just a few moments' time. The officials making their way back from the interval in between sessions. Drawn randomly ahead of each bout, of course. And so the five scoring judges have taken up their positions around the boxing ring. Our referee Ashok Kaliban, Kabilan Sai from India in position. And there is the Ukrainian boxer who will operate out of the blue corner, Yulia Peleschuk. Part of a 19-strong Ukrainian boxing team. Her opponent from Poland, Natalia Kuchewska. Poland here at full strength with boxes in each and every weight class across the two tournaments for men and women. A big moment for both of these boxes, the women's light flyweight tournament about to get underway. In this contest to see who will progress through to the round of 16. So we're underway then. 48 kilogram light flyweight action, three three minute rounds in this preliminary contest between boxers from Poland and Ukraine. The taller figure wearing red is Natalia Kuchewska. 17 years of age, comes in as the reigning national youth champion, having taken that title here in Poland. But arcing punch success for Peleschuk, the more compact figure who's using good timing to score effectively and negate the longer reach of the woman in red. Nice right hand catching the retreating boxer in blue, landed by Kuchewska. Peleschuk trying to use quick feet to close the range and find her own offense. So a minute gone in the opening round. It's been a busy start by both boxers. Counter right hand from Kuchewska not too far away and there's a solid left hook which causes Peleschuk to become a little bit disorganized. Final left hand landed by Peleschuk and then a jolting left jab catching Kuchewska as she was coming in. Kuchewska with a good right hand around the corner. And this a non-stop punching start by both of these boxers. So both boxers fainting. They try to work their way in, jolting single straight, landed by Kuchewska once again, and she follows it up, coming in waves with her attacks now, and looking to sustain some pressure and success at the expense of Yulia Peleschuk. Solid right hand landed by the boxer in blue. Both of these boxers willing to stand and trade. Plenty of attention being paid to the defensive side of the game as well. Slipping in evidence, fainting, bobbing and weaving, particularly from Peleschuk as she tries to score with a left jab but didn't really commit to the shot. But she did with that one, stepping in and timing that lead left hand wonderfully. But she's caught on the retreat once again as she tries to disengage by the flicking left hand of Kuchewska. A flashing left hook on the back foot landed by Peleschuk. Back and forth action in this opening round of the 48 kilogram light flyweight tournament for women. Cutting right hand landed by Peleschuk. Nudging away with the right hand to the torso. Here's Kuchewska. What a blistering opening round between these two light flyweight boxes. And indeed, it is split. That's how close it was. 
Three of the judges favoring the work of Kucheska. Two of the judges favoring the work of Palestchuk. Hard fought contest with plenty of two way action as we take a look at some of it from that opening three minutes. Second out, please. Round two. So into the second round then. This battle reigning national champions. Oh, proving to be a cracking affair on what a right hand landed by Kucheska. But Paleschuk. Keen not to be backed up, walking her way back after she, her back touch of ropes momentarily. She was put there by a strong left jab. Cheska, as well as her domestic success, where she reigns supreme. 48 kilograms. She's also a bronze medalist in last year's youth championship for 48 kilograms. Oh, hard right hand landed around the corner. Threatened to go behind the ear, but it was a solid shot indeed. Landed with the right hook from Kucheska. So Kucheska in and out with the feet. Palestruk up on her toes, moving laterally to her left. She scores effectively to the body. She takes a glancing right hand to the chin. The follow-up right hand was altogether more solid. And a solid one-two combination from Kucheska, followed by another right hand success, makes this a good portion of the round for the home boxer wearing red. Good left hand to the body and then onto the front foot immediately after causing Palestruk to become a little bit disorganized. Both boxers digging their toes into the canvas and getting plenty of leverage onto their shots. Good work to the body. Really intelligent boxing from Palestruk. Kucheska comes back with a right hook around the corner. But as Kucheska was tucking up tightly, it left the torso open. Palestruk recognized it immediately and speared a hard right hand just above the belt line. Right hook catches Palestruk on the retreat once again. No quarter ass, none given between these two. And there's a double jab right hand success for Kucheska, who may well be getting on top with two minutes gone in the second round. She's got the greater volume of punches. Palestruk is producing quality of her own, but she's been backed up by straight punches like that. And again, we talk about how much inspiration athletes competing on home soil can gain as the left hook followed by a right hook are two crisp shots landed by Kucheska. And she's proven to be irresistible through this portion of the round. Boxers disengaged. They're beyond punching range for one of the few times in this second stanza. But Kucheska back into the pocket once again. Double jab right hand may have been partially blocked. The follow-up left jab certainly wasn't. And now it's Kucheska clearly getting on top as she continues to back up her opponent. Right hand success drives the boxer in blue backward once again. And she is keen to initiate a clinch. Tries a sneaky right hand as she tries to disengage. But look at that solid right hand around the corner, landed by Kucheska, followed by a snaking left jab and an arcing left hand to conclude the round, going through the gears magnificently. A terrific second three minutes produced by Natalia Kucheska. And that is why she has swept it across the board, 10-8 for three of the judges. So it is all square, 19 points apiece for judges B and D, for the other three judges, it is Kocheska who is in control. And what a three minutes she produced. Palestruk was trying to hang in the opening minute of the second round. But as the round progressed, Kocheska simply would not be denied, continued to walk down her opponent and land clean, arcing punches, straight shot success as well. A terrific three minute session produced which gives all, her all of the momentum as we prepare for the third and final round. Palestruk has got a lot to do. Second out, please. Round three. So we're underway then. This bout between reigning national champions has been absolutely fascinating, but the momentum 
has tilted in favor of the boxer in red. Natalia Kucheska produced a brilliant second round and that has put her in a strong position. It's all square for judges B and D, 19 points apiece, but there's further right-hand success produced by Kucheska as she backs up the woman in blue with a clean, crisp pot shot. Looking for a double jab right hand, didn't really find the range. Flashing left hook is landed by Palestchuk. But look at the dynamism in the work of Kucheska. Teasing, fainting with the feet. Tries to come back into range. Her single shot success was stronger than that. Landed by P Palestchuk. But again, the onus is on the boxer in blue to try and turn things around, a push off to create some space tactic used by Kocheska, and then she landed a solid left jab. Kocheska positively oozing confidence and now beginning to play with her opponent, making shapes, trying to distract her. Palestruk trying to remain concentrated at the, on the task at hand, but she's cuffed by another left hook once again. Terrific exchange, but look who's making it. First and third boxing, it's Kucheska who continued her attack, bringing a second phase of it to have the final word during that coming together. Left-right combination piercing the guard of Palestchuk. And Palestchuk, while well, she's running out of time here, as she eats another left jab. And you have to credit Kucheska for setting a tempo as Palestchuk gets through with a single shot success. But Kucheska has set a pace that Palestruk has found very difficult to live with. The two of them were going almost blow for blow in the opening round, which was what edged 3-2 in favor of the boxer wearing red. But then in the second round, Kucheska found another gear, perhaps another couple of gears went through them, and Palestruk was hanging on to her coattails as she was threatening to put clear daylight between herself and her opponent as she scores with a left hook and then a right hand as a back touch the rope she spins back to the space of center ring lands another two shot salvo palestruk just backs off and now steps back into the fray once again but kucheska up on her toes looking as though she could do this for 15 rounds let alone the three three minute rounds as dictated by aiba boxing in the youth category left hand landed with the wrist from Kucheska and Palestruk, well, she's been outgunned in this contest here. It's a free swinging tear up as a final exchange inside the 10 second clapper. And unsurprisingly, perhaps fittingly, the final shot of the contest landed by Kucheska, who outworked her opponent in the third round as she did in the second. Palestruk, a quality operator, she demonstrated that, but she was outworked, outpunched, outscored and outboxed during the course of that contest. Particularly in rounds two and three, Kucheska boxing on a home stage in a global tournament, producing a magnificent display to open her account. And we are pretty certain that is going to take her through to the round of 16 in the women's 48 kilogram light flyweight division. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this bout by unanimous decision is the boxer from the red corner, Natalia Kuczewska. And Pol there is confirmation of a unanimous point decision victory. And just look at the margins, 30-26, 30-25 twice. Natalia Kuczewska increasing her dominance as the round, as the bout went on. Yulia Palestchuk, Ukrainian national champion, deserves immense credit for hanging tough and showing plenty of skill, but she was outworked as more and more as the contest progressed. And it is Kocheska who goes through to the round of 16. She'll be in action again in two days' time. Bout number 95 in Rinke. Women's Benson, 51, 54 kilograms. Into the red corner, please welcome boxer from Czech Republic, Toptova Claudia. So we remain in the 
excuse me, we move up to the 54 kilogram bantamweight division. And this one will be man. between boxers from the Czech Republic and Thailand. Srivasas Nupaket. Judge assignment. Judge one, Croatia. Two, Kazakhstan. Three, Malaysia. Four, Singapore. Five, Ukraine. Referee, Luca Adilonga, Italy. Well, we've got judges from Croatia, Kazakhstan, Malaysia, Singapore, and Ukraine scoring this one using the 10 point must system. Luca Vallelonga of Italy is the referee. First bout of the day in the 54 kilogram bantamweight division. This one between boxers from the Czech Republic and Thailand. The southpaw wearing red is Claudia Totova in her first bout of Kyoto 2021. The woman wearing blue representing Thailand is Nopaket Srisawas. This is her second bout of the Youth World Championships for women, having produced a very good display indeed to emerge a 4-1 winner, split decision winner on points, outpointing her opponent, Michaela Kakamo, on the opening bout, on the opening day of competition here in Poland. Solid right hand landed, and it was rapid as well from Srisawas. She demonstrated that quality of explosive speed in her opening contest there. She's looking for the right hand to the body. She possesses really good movement languid at times, but then she just uncoils like a cobra to land with accurate punches. Totova, looking to establish her lead right hand and try and take advantage of the longer reach and range that she possesses, but she's hit with a hard right hand just above the belt line. Look at how her left elbow is now tucked up, perhaps in response to taking that shot. But then when the left elbow came down, the right hand was scored over the top. High ring IQ being demonstrated by Srisawas, creating the openings with her single shot successes and exploiting them ruthlessly. Falling short, but she's backed up. Totova to the ropes, terrific use of the feet by Totova to turn, spin her opponent, and then land with a left hand underneath. Half hook, half, half uppercut, and it was an effective shot. Osiris just rather telegraphing that attempted right hand to the body. Totova able to evade it. Oh, but she couldn't evade that one. Another single pot shot success from the right flank from Srisawas. Well, there were rather flailing shots attempted to the body by Srisa Was, and that's why she was counted upstairs by Totova. While she's... I just wonder whether she's varying the speed of her right hand intentionally as she scored with a cracking combination, arcing punches with the right and left hand over the top with the right, underneath with the left. Some boxers who possess terrific speed 
like turning on a light switch. And the punches always come at the same speed, so the opponent can adjust to it. Srisawasa demonstrated that she possesses blazing speed, but isn't afraid to vary it. She's taken the first round 4-1, Judge D preferring the work of the woman in red. 10-9 for all four of, for the other four scoring judges. Some of the action from that opening round. Second time. Round two. So the two 17 year olds contesting this bout out for the second round. Winning her gum shield after being roughed up on the inside was Sri Sawas, the boxer representing Thailand. Nice left hand landed by the boxer in blue and another one on the retreat, catching Totova as she was attempting to close the distance and score with her own right jab. A little bit of a shuffle from Sri Sawas. She landed a shot, but she took one on the way out. Totova remaining concentrated in the face of that fancy footwork Sri Sawas was trying to distract her with. Changing her posture once again is Sri Sawas, edging in and out with the feet. Sri Sawas just trying to lure Totova into committing and making a mistake while she'll quicken those feet and those punches. Nudging right hand landed underneath by the boxer in blue and then catching Totova as she was disengaging. Two shots to the body, finished with a left hook to the head. Totova trying to work away, but her hands were tied up and then a real veteran move as Srisawas continues to skip around the boxing ring and lands a beautiful right cross as she let closes the distance. Changing the feet once again and this increased dynamism in her movement is posing problems for Totova because Srisawas has enjoyed repeated success with the right hand in the previous 20 seconds or so. So beyond the midpoint of the second round, and that's a beautifully timed right hand once again. Sri Sawas using that right hand against the southpaw to terrific effect and invariably catching her as she is coming in, timing her wonderfully. There was an exchange of shots there. The left cross from Totova countered by a right cross from Sri Sawas as another exchange occurs at center ring. Hard fought action here with two minutes gone in the second round. Left, right, reverse one, two, catches Srisawas from Totova as she was disengaging. And it was Srisawas who was on top in the first portion of the round. But as we got into this final minute, we began to see exchanges where both boxers were enjoying success. Can Totova turn the tide by ending the Final, the final minute on her turns, but she's walked into another right hand once again. Nice move by Srisawas to make Totova miss. Here's the 10 second clapper. Walks Totova onto another right hand once again. Terrific punch picking and composure in the pocket being demonstrated by Srisawas. And look at that for body language, raising her right arm immediately. And I'm inclined to agree with her that she has taken that second round. It may be split. But it's Totova who has got it. Four judges to one. So this one in the balance as we go into the third and final round. Second out, please. 
Round three. So the third and final round underway in a contest that is in the balance and up for grabs. It was a 4-1 split in favor of Srisaras in the opening round. A 4-1 split in favor of Totova in the second round. So now whoever comes out on top in this final three-minute session is likely to be declared a split decision winner. It's incredibly close. It's incredibly competitive. Oh, beautiful left jab landed by Srisawas. On the resumption, Totova trying to score with two punches without reply. She was the first to react to the command of box. She's the first to react once again. The heads come together as the two boxes fall in. And the same action repeated immediately after the warning of no holding or the conversation of no holding from the Italian referee in the direction of Srisawas. But increasingly now, as is often the case with South Korean Orthodox boxers, the feet are getting tangled up. They're crowding one another on the inside, hitting on the break from Totova in her bid to get on top. Beautiful right hand on the resumption landed by Srisawas. Left jit cross not too far away from Totova before the foxes fall into one another once again. So beyond the midpoint of the final round, this one incredibly keenly contested. Quality just decreasing a little bit in this final round. The stakes incredibly high. Both boxes will be aware of the context of this third and final round and how things stood on the, stood on the scorecards coming in. But again, this is what we're seeing now, increasing amounts of bodies clashing rather than clean punch picking, which characterized the first two rounds. Who can produce some quality here in the final minute, which may be decisive in tilting the balance in their favor. Working away to the body is Srisawas. Holding her opponent's arm on the blind side by tucking the right arm of Totova beneath her left. And it's untidy once again. Both boxers leaving it all in the ring. It's very physical. Totova shaking her head in, frustrating, in frustrated fashion. Again, the similar posture resumes once more. Nice right jab landed by Totova. Srisawas looking for the right hand, but it's another maul on the inside. Inside the 10 second clapper. Burst of punches to the body from both boxes. And that a hard fought third and final round to determine who will be the victor in a contest that was in the balance after two completed rounds. Whichever way it goes, it's likely to be a split decision verdict. Who will the judges favor? after that incredibly hard-fought affair. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this bout by split decision is the boxer from the blue corner. And it's Trista West, Sampakets, Thailand. a split decision victor over Claudia Totova of the Czech Republic. A 3-2 split decision winner. Incredibly close, close contest. But for what it's worth, I think it's the right verdict because I thought that she took the second round, but that's, that's not how it was scored. But she toughed it out. Totova deserves credit for playing her part in what was an incredibly hard-fought affair, edging the third and final round, Srisa West, 3-2 in her favor. And it is she who goes through to the quarter-final stage, having completed two wins out of two here at Kielce 2021. Credit to Claudia Totova was significant 
factor in what was a very good contest indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, bout number 96 in the ring came. Women's Bantam, 51 54 kilogram. Into the red corner, please welcome boxer from Uzbekistan, Nikita Uktamova. So, our next contest is between boxers from Uzbekistan and India as we remain in the 54 kilogram bantamweight division. And Swiss opponent in the blue corner, representing India, Arshi Khanam. They're the judges who will score this one. They come from Moldova, Chinese Taipei, Hungary, Czech Republic, and Bosnia and Herzegovina. And gentlemen, judge assignments. Judge one, Moldova. Two, Taipei. Three, Hungary. Four, Czech Republic. Five, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Referee, Rai Rami, Scotland. Ravi Rai of Scotland is the third person in the ring. He'll be the referee for this one. Round one. So we're underway then. 54 kilogram bantamweight division, and this one is between boxers from India and Uzbekistan. The Indian boxer is the woman wearing blue. And it's a quick start by both boxers, just falling short of the range. And that final coming together, but it's a nicely picked punch by the boxer from Uzbekistan wearing red. That is Nagina Uktamova. Uktamova, 17 years of age. Beautiful punch picking off the back foot by Arshi Kanam. The left jab landed by Uktamova. Trying to deter the woman in blue from coming forward. She lands with a good left right once again. Look at Uktamova try and work away on the inside as the boxers are mauling one another. Really committed to these shots that she's launching, and a left hand crashes into the head of Uktamova from Kanam. That left hand was long, and it's landing indeed with the wrist and the forearm. Ravi Rai perfectly placed to point out that illegal blow. Nice left jab landed to the body by Uktamova. Double left jab for the second one score, and look at that for a quick fisted combination from the woman in red. And again, she's trying to work away with that free left hand. Kanam had her right arm tucked beneath her own left. Veteran tactics being employed by the 18 year old on the Indian squad. Beautiful single shot. And again, it was a two shot combination by Uktamova running Kanam onto these punches. But Kanam simply will not be denied and continues to pour forward. But keeping her cool in the pocket is Uktamova. And despite the figure of Kanam, 
marching towards her. Look at how she's able to pick her off. Terrific piercing of the guard once again by Uktamova. Just playing with her hands now. Caught by a flashing, looping left, right, but again, punching incorrectly from Kanam. She's been spoken to twice about that particular infringement as the boxers come together and take part in an exchange. Beautiful reverse one-two landed by Uktamova. This time it was Uktamova land, guilty of landing with the inside of the glove, jab to the head, then work to the body before coming back up to the head from Uktamova. So closing seconds of the first round, and what a busy opening three minutes it has been. One, two, success once more from Uktamova, who's bustling away with punches beneath the elbows of the woman in blue to work the body. Uktamova onto the front foot to end the round, and as the two boxers came together, there was a little uppercut landed by the woman in red as the bell sounded. Terrific opening round. Well, I think Uktamova can consider herself rather unfortunate there because there was no doubt that it was Kanam looking to be the aggressor. But I thought the punch picking of the woman in red was quality. But you've got judges seated all around the ring here. Five of them scoring this contest and all of them have scored in favor of the work of Kanam. Her aggression paying dividends. She leads in unanimous fashion after three minutes are in the book. Second out, please. Round two. So, Tamava comes in as the reigning national champion of Uzbekistan and a continental champion as well, off her stool and scoring with straight punches. Again, neutralizing the aggression for my money of Kanam, who's continuing to swarm and maraud forwards, but he's being made to pay a heavy price. Kanam lands with a good right hand that backs up the woman in red. Good use of the feet, and it's another exchange, but look at Uktamava work the body. There was a good shot upstairs landed by Kanam. Terrific exchanges, flashing left hook landed by Kanam, who was on the back foot for one of the few times in this contest just a few moments ago. Comes forward once again, but he's walked into a right hand once more during the course of that exchange. Hook Tamava looking to work the body. Kanam with her left hook success around the corner. Well, she faked. Fainted with the right hand, and while it was looping around the corner, Uktamava scored with a right hand, as she did once again. Uktamava with a solid right cross. It's countered by a left jab from Kanan. The give-and-take action continues with a minute gone in the second round. Piercing the guard with a left-right combination is Uktamava. Again, look at the activity to the body from Uktamava. Just working away with a flurry of shoe shine shots and she drops downstairs with a terrific left hand once again. Corkscrew left and right hand, piercing the defenses and then a clean shot without reply from the left hook, followed by a right cross from Uktamava. Beyond the midpoint of the second round. Remember, the first round was scored against the... Oh, and down goes Kanan, but it's ruled a slip. I think the feet did get tangled up. But a cuffing shot seemed to land from Uktamava as well. Oh, this coming at an inopportune time from Uktamava's point of view. Adjustments required to the belt line. Of course, that has to be visible so the referee and the judges can see whether the shot is fair or foul. But having got that extra oxygen in their lungs, look at the start from both boxers on the resumption. Kanan with a terrific successful flurry. During that first exchange, and a strong right hand again jolts Uktamava's head back. Exchange of solid shots. There's Kanam enjoying a really good portion of the round. Uktamava trying to drive her backwards, getting onto the front foot. So the non stop action continues, and it's high quality as well. Boxers taking a trip to the canvas. Remember, if anything other than the feet touches the canvas, well, a punch sends you there, it's a knockdown. 
again, both boxers letting their hands go at short and mid-range. Reverse one, two, landed by Tamara. And how about that for a corkscrew left just before the belt from the woman in red. She snaked it upwards and jolted Canam's head back. And she has taken the second round for four of the five scoring judges. Judge E preferring the work of the boxer in blue. So for judges A, B, C and D, it is all square, 19 points apiece for Judge E. It is a two-point advantage, 20 points to 18, in favor of Arshi Kanam of India. Well, what a three minutes we have in prospect here. This contest up for grabs. This woman has the momentum behind her, having taken the second round on a 4 1 split. Only Judge E preferring the work of Kanam, but that means for Judge E, she leads by two points, 2018. For the other four observers, it is all square, 19 points apiece. Both of the boxers are aware of the status of this bout, and that is why they are going for it in the opening stages here of round number three. Good right hand landed by Kanam during that exchange, but look at that for a solid right cross landed by Tamava as they come together once again. Both boxers with notable successes in the opening minutes of this third round. <laughs> Looping right hand around the corner lands for Uktamova. Oh, beautiful left-right combination landed by the European champion. Runs Kanam into a right jab once a right cross once again. And she did so following that as she scores downstairs effectively before coming up with a hook. Now remember, again, for my money, the five judges scored it in favor of Uktamava. But Kanam was very aggressive in the opening round. So the first round went in Kanam's favor unanimously. She was very aggressive. Uktamava was boxing effectively with counters, running her onto right hands. But remember, for aggression to be scored, it has to be considered effective aggression. Got some problem with the binding there on the right glove. It hasn't been stopped the contest. And both boxers continue to let their hands go. Look, Tamava again taking the opportunity to work at close range. And she scores with shots to the body. Left hook landed on the inside. And now... Oh, there is the binding going to be adjusted. That right glove off Tamava. Kanam sent to the neutral corner just above our commentary position. Oh, that's a beautiful right hand on the restart from Uktamava. Kanam trying to get even after she took that hard single. Uktamava made to fall short by Kanam, but Kanam couldn't score with the attempted counter. Inside the final minute of the third and final round, beautiful one-two landed by Uktamava, and then a left jab success during that coming together as well. Kanam boring in with the head as she tries to push Uktamava backwards. Uktamava looking for a right hand lead. She couldn't find the range. She's letting her hands go when the two boxers are on the inside. Another right hand success landed by the woman in red. And again, repeatedly running Kanam into that backhand punch. So closing stages of the third and final round. Reverse one, two landed by Uktamava. Kanam lands a right hand over the top. She sustained a cut lip. Such is the ferocity of this contest. So inside the 10 second clapper, and a right hand launched over the top by Uktamava it was countered by a response from Kanam. A terrific contest in the 54 kilogram bantamweight division. Well, who is going to have their hand raised in this one? Plenty of aggression coming from Kanam in the third and final round. For what it's worth, I think some of the more eye-catching, cleaner work came from Uktamava, but that is irrelevant 
This is going to the five scoring judges seated around the boxing ring. It was 19 points apiece for judges A, B, C, and D, who will have their hand raised as the victor. Here's the verdict. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this bout by split decision is the boxer from the red corner, Nigina Oktamova. And it is Nigina Oktamova who has prevailed on a 4-1 split, 29-28 across the board. But four of the judges scoring in favor of Oktamova, overturning. A first round deficit where she conceded it unanimously. She's acknowledging all sides of the ring here. A terrific display, a wonderful fight back. And Nagina Uktamova, the European champion, the national champion, prevailing over the game. Arshi Kanam, who played her part in what was a thrilling affair over three three minute rounds, will no doubt be seeing her again in Aiba competitions in the future. Arshi Kanam. But here at Kielsa 2021, it is Uktamova who goes through. In Rinke, women's bantam, 51, 54 kilograms. Into the red corner, please welcome boxer from Greece, Gianna Coppolo Antonia Filippa. So we remain in the 54 kilogram bantamweight division and this one between boxers from Greece and Russia. And she's opponent in the blue corner, Representing Russia, Kirienko Anastasia. And judge assignment, judge one, Kyrgyzstan, two, Argentina. So here Croatia, are the judges who will score this one. States, Kyrgyzstan, Argentina, Argentina Croatia, United Vladimir States of America and Ar India Ar are their respective homelands. Round one. So we're underway then. The 54 kilogram bantamweight division. This one between boxers from Greece and Russia. The woman rearing red is the Greek boxer. Antonia Filippa Giannakopoulou, her opponent, out of the South Force stance, wearing blue, being backed up. Anastasia Kirienko, marauding her way forward. Is the two-time national champion of Greece, Giannakopoulou. By the boxer really taking notice of the instructions coming from the referee. And he reminds them of their responsibility to listen and obey the instructions. Kirienko just falling short as Jana Kopalu, using the space of the boxing ring, comes forward with a swarming fisted attack, but couldn't really find the range, Jana Kopalu. Well, <laughs> both boxers admonished again for failing to listen to the instructions of the referee. Now, plenty of good movement in evidence in this battle of reigning national champions. Kirienko comes in 
Oh, that's a beautiful right jab. Once, twice, three times. Flicked out by Kirienko. Kirienko. European Championship silver medalist from the tournament that took place in Woodva Montenegro. The youth championships last year. So more experience on the continental stage under the belt of Kirienko. And a whole host of national championships in the youth and junior ranks as well. So a minute to go in the opening round. Raiding attack attempted by Kirienko, but didn't quite find the range. The left cross that followed upstairs was a little bit closer. Jana Kopalu now edging her way forward, bobbing and weaving, dipping at the knees, looking for a corkscrew right hand, lashing left cross was off the mark from Kirienko. Now armbar applied by Jana Kopalu. Rough house tactics between these two 17 year olds. Kirienko. Bringing a missing once again. He did land with a left hook on the inside. Oh, hitting on the break from Gianna Coppolu. My goodness. The referee has had his hands full in this opening round. Roundhouse right. Wasn't too far away from Gianna Coppolu. And she goes in pursuit of Kirienko on the Kirienko on the 10 second clapper. Wow, that's a physical opening round here. At the Halep, Legionov. Kirienko's, Kirienko's quality, that is taking it 10-9 across the board. In her favor. Some of the action from that opening round. Pecking, poking right jab that she was able to flick out three times in rapid fire succession for a triple right jab success. See how disruptive the app it is when it lands, catching Gianna Coppolu as she's coming forward. Second out to take Round two. So to the second round then. Antonia, Antonia Philippa Giannakopoulou. Only woman representative on the Greek boxing team. It's the team that is three strong. She's got two male teammates in the men's competition. Kirienko, well, she's one of a full complement of women making up the Russian squad. Ten boxers in tapes, ten weight divisions, and that is the exact same scenario in the women's, in the men's division as well. Blasting away to the body with that left hand is Kirienko. Approaching a minute gone in this second round. Wonderful right jab, snakes upwards, landed by Kirienko. And for the same shot once again, but she did land with a straight, solid left cross. Flashing away to the belt line once again with a left hand. Pushing off Gianna Coppolu to create some distance. Scoring with a left hand to the body once again. It's more rough housing on the inside. And both boxers equally culpable in that regard. As the mauling ensues once more, headlocks, arm bars, all types of holds being applied. And for the umpteenth time in this contest, the referee having to remind the boxers that they are to listen to his command. Left hand scored on the retreat by Kirienko. Flashing right hand from Gianna Coppolu lands. It's becoming increasingly untidy, this one, when there have been pockets of quality. For the most part, they have come from the boxer in blue. She scored with a beautiful left cross earlier in this round. She used the right jab effectively in periods in the first. She's the one inching forwards and reversing backwards incrementally. And there's the left cross in evidence once again. It really does flash out like a whiplash from Kirienko. 
contest has been typified by more of that type of tangle than it has by quality punch picking. Nice right hand once again from Kirienko. Anakopoulou going with cuffing shots from the inside. Shot that took the more direct route came from the boxer in blue. This is a physical affair, this one. Good right jab landed by Kirienko. Sporting touch of gloves to end what was a very hard fought round. I suspect the quality of the woman in blue will be favored once again. She produced the more eye catching work. But Jana Kopalu taking it for judges C and D. A 3 2 split in favor of Kirienko in what was a very physical round indeed. Hard fought, competitive, keenly contested. But a 3 2 split favor of the European champion, excuse me, European silver medalist. Round three. So into the third and final round then. It's all square for judges C and D. The, those observers scored the second round in favor of Gianna Coppoli. More aggression. Gianna Coppoli steps on the gas in search of her own success, but look at the mauling that ensues when the boxers get up to close quarters. Looking for a very untidy affair. How do you score this portion here? Left hand nudged into the body by Kirienko but plenty more grappling and the sweet science of boxing in evidence the more this contest progresses very difficult task indeed for the judges to score and in this type of round one sustained moment of quality can be enough to determine the winner because look at that on the inside styles not really gelling to make an aesthetically pleasing contest Yanakopoulou almost turning her palms upwards in pleading fashion in the direction of the official. But again, I think both parties equally culpable in this more fest that is taking place here in the third and final round. The referee giving them the opportunity to work away, but neither boxer able to free their hands and do so. But it's an untidy affair, this. And that seems as though it could well be the final talking to in the direction of Jana Kopalu. But the two boxers fall into the same posture once again. Headlocks being applied. Well, not being the cleanest exhibition of the noble art of self-defense, this one. That right hand from Kirienko, Kirienko not too far away. Inside the final minute, what has been a messy frame to this point. That's what's continuing here. Very, very difficult to score here because there is so little clean scoring, very little ring craft in evidence, and precious little defense. There's a cuffing right hand, but it's after the command of stop. So really pushing the rule book to its outer limits here with these two boxes. And they find themselves in a familiar posture. Entwined limbs once again. Well, that's a burst of quality as marching forward was Jana Kopalu. But a left hand success on the inside by Kirienko. And just look at that. It's as though they're playing a game of Twister. Bodies tangled untidily just before the final belt. Well, not one for the purest, that one. No doubting the fire and competitive spirit both of these boxers brought to the boxing ring.
Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this bout by unanimous decision is the boxer from the blue corner, Anastasia Kirienko, Russia. So Anastasia Kirienko, the reigning European Championship silver medalist, the 2019 European Junior gold medalist prevailing on a unanimous points verdict at the conclusion of what was a very untidy affair indeed. Anatonia Filippa Giannacopoulou competed ferociously. She eliminated in this round of the women's 54 kilogram bantamweight tournament. It is Kirienko who goes through to the quarterfinals. Bouts number 98 in ring A. Women's bantam. 51, 54 kilograms. Into the red corner, please welcome boxer from Belarus, Vian Handrdava Irina. And she's opponent in the blue corner, representing Ecuador, Jennifer Pardo. And judge assignment, judge one, Moldavia. So they're the five two, judges Argentina, who will score this three, one. Malaysia, four, Hi Pai, five, Italy. Referee, Bakitsan, Bekepepeto, Kazakhstan. So we're underway then. We remain in the 54 kilogram bantamweight division. This one between boxers from Belarus and Ecuador. The woman wearing red is Irina Vinaradova competing in her second contest here at Kielce 2021, having prevailed on a unanimous point decision verdict over her opponent from Nepal, Samina Kadka, to progress her through to the round of 16. Her opponent, Jennifer Pardo of Ecuador, received a bye to book her place in this second preliminary round. Both of these boxers looking to progress through to the quarterfinal stage. Lina Radova, very patient. You see her looking to measure with that right hand, and that's a shot that served her very well in her opening contest. On the opening day of competition, beautiful corkscrew left hand shot up from the hip by Vina Radova. Now she's bringing the right hand lead into play. Pardo circling anti-clockwise, trying to stay out of punching range. She did so effectively there, but then she's short with her own offense. The jab did get through, but it was countered immediately by Vina Radova. Nice left jab landed by Vina Radova once again. Brings the right hand into play. She took a left jab in response from Pardo, but then getting the better of that, uh, that exchange was the woman in red. So the left hand is working terrifically for her, and she's showing good range with it as well, good variety as she scores with a right hand over the top of the low-held left of Pardo. 
feeds her another left jab, and then a right left success turns it into a reverse one to Vina Radova. Tempting and teasing with that right hand, chasing, changing the position of that left, and that's a rapier-like right cross. Terrific punch picking from Vina Radova, who's edging her way forwards and just increasingly finding the range with more regularity with two minutes and change gone in this round. There's a good right hand in response from Pardo, trying to get her jab working. Remember, it's her first contest of the tournament. Vina Radova has already got the experience of operating here in ring A under her belt and hasn't she settled into this one quickly and efficiently. Not too far away with that right hand. Looping left, landed with the inside of the glove from Pardo perhaps. Tried to loop her on the corner. Both boxers enjoying single right-hand successes, but then a disruptive jab landed by Vina Radova. Nice to see that touch of gloves. A show of respect between the two boxers at the end of the first round, which has been swept by Vina Radova. Her punch picking rewarded by the five scoring judges. Some of the action from that first round. Tickets out, please. Going to the second round then. Two 17 year olds. Just very compelling opening three minutes. Pardo comes in here as the 2019 Ecuadorian junior national champion. The second consecutive junior title, having taken schoolgirl gold in her homeland of Ecuador in 2017. All of them coming at 54 kilograms. The national championship successes. Meeting here in her first global competition. In a rather a silver medalist as she lands with a looping left, but that altogether more forceful right cross. But that same shot was reciprocated from Pardo. Right hand success once again, and another one landed as Pardo gets through with her own counter, but perhaps Vina Radova getting the better of that exchange as the two boxers check the chins of one another again. Right-hand successes for both boxers. Pardo really finding the reins with that punch with a minute and change gone in this second round. Lancing right hand landed by Pardo at the very end of the shot. Just grazed the chin of Vina Radova. Nice left jab landed by Vina Radova. Pardo loading up, looking for that backhand once again. Oh, there's a beautiful right hand over the top from Vina Radova, who is bearing her gum shield now, showing defiance as she's biting down and stepping into her own punching range. She was given a right cross by Pardo, who scored with it effectively. Terrific boxing here. Double left jab, right cross attempt. Blocked by the gloves and forearms of Vina Radova. Nice left jab landed by Pardo. And another one. And picking off Vina Radova as she was loading up, looking for her own right hand. Exchange of jabs once again. Two educated, punch-picking boxers sharing the space of the ring here. Right hand over the top from Vina Radova was in response to a left jab poked out by Pardo. Terrific action. The two-way variety through this second round so far. Vina Radova scoring with a jab. Right hand over the top was a scoring shot from Vina Radova. 
characteristically carrying that left hand around her belt line, making Pardo miss, but she's out of range for the counter. Both boxers off the mark with their right crosses, double jab success, and then a right cross, and then an exchange on the bell, but it was Pardo who enjoyed double jab success and then a right cross. But a very good round indeed. Vina Radova, who has swept it once again. 2018 now after two completed rounds. And remember, in Aiba, the 10 point must system 10 9. 10 9 is in favor of a close winner. 10 8, a clear winner. 10 7, total domination. And that was a far closer round. Vina Radova deservingly getting it from all five of the scoring judges. Pardo did begin to find a range with her own straight shots, the left jab and right cross, far more competitive from my vantage point than she was in the opening round, but she's now trailing by a two-point deficit for all five of the scoring judges, 2018. For observers A, B, C, D and E, Pardo needs an enormous third and final round. Round three. Beautiful right hand on the restart of this contest to begin the third round. And then a corkscrew left snaked in by Vina Radova. Part of a 10-strong Belarusian boxing team. She one of two women making up that number. She scores with a looping right hand over the top. Hardo, the squad where there's parity. Two men and two women in the contingent of four boxers representing Ecuador. Nice left jab to the body by Vina Radova. Pardo tried to respond upstairs, but didn't get through. Change of jabs once again, and how about that for a one, two, three from Pardo. The final left hand jolting the head back of Vina Radova, who did land with her own shots. Pardo threatening to stray low with that left hand, but Vina Radova doesn't complain. So Vina Radova holding that left hand down by her quad now. On that left side, again, presenting a different angle, but Pardo taking advantage of the open chin and scoring with a left jab. She's going for the left-right combination, but they were blocked effectively by Vina Radova. Vina Radova short with her attempted forward for eight. Nice right hand landed in that one-two combination by the woman in red. Change of backhands. Pardo's was an effective shot. Pardo, remember, given the context of this contest, she really has got to do more than she's doing here. She's demonstrating lovely skill, but she's trailing by a two-point margin. And if she hopes to progress through to the round of six, to the quarterfinals from the round of 16, well, she's got to step on the gas in pursuit of a 10-8 round. There's a right cross. Of course, in boxing, you also have the option of taking your opponent out inside the distance. KO, ABD, RSC, all of those acronyms indicating that the contest has come to an end before the final belt. I don't think and that's what Pardo increasingly is going to need here because she's running out of time in a bid to get back on terms. Being competitive, she's shown plenty of skill and variety in her work just not enough to overcome Vina Radova. Nice counter right hand landed by the woman in red. Beautiful right hand once again and both boxes going for right hands. Pardo's got through. Arcing right hand brought into play by Vina Radova. Oh, well, that is, dare I say it, the essence of boxing, the essence of sport, always trying to have the final word, you hit me, I'm going to hit you straight back, even though the bell had sounded when both boxers let those single shots go. As Ricky Hatton was fond of saying, he had success on the global stage, making the podium in the junior ranks, the tournament in Cuba. This isn't a tickling contest. Has to be fought in the right spirit, though. Both boxers just keen not to concede anything. Tag me after the bell. Well, here, have one back as we take a look at some of the action from that third and final round.
One suspects it will be Vina Radova going through in unanimous fashion to the quarterfinal stage. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this battle by unanimous decision is the boxer from the red corner, Irina Vinahardarava, Belarus. Well, terrific performance by Irina Vinaradova, prevailing as a unanimous points decision winner to go through to the last eight of the 54 kilogram bantamweight tournament. And here's how she did it. Well, Credit to Jennifer Pardo getting herself into the contest by taking the third and final round for judges A and C, but not enough to overturn Bouts the two-point deficit she Ring faced Ring. going into the third and final 64. round. It's Vina Radova who goes through or through in action on the 19th of April against the India. European Bonne medalist Bonne Anastasia Bonne Kirienko. We're moving up to the women's 69 kilogram welterweight division. This one between boxers from Castos India and Colombia. We've got judges from Bosnia Herzegovina, Scotland, the United States of America, Hungary, and the Czech Republic who are scoring this one. Round one. So into the first round then. I mean, 69 kilogram welterweight action. It's one between boxers from India and Colombia. The southpaw wearing red is the Indian boxer. That is Arun Hati Chowdhury, 18 years of age. 2019 Asian Continental Championships bronze medalist. In the same year, she was a national champion of her homeland. Her opponent, wearing blue, is the Colombian boxer. In area, Casas Jerez. Then we'll refer to her as Casas, as is custom during this contest. First part of the tournament for the welterweights. Just nine boxers. That terrific success in a cluster of punches from Chowdhury, but just nine boxers contesting this one as Chowdhury oh, calling time out once again. She's not happy with her uniform, but really that's the responsibility of her and her team. Exactly. My sentiments exactly. Those of the referee, this is why they prepare backstage to ensure that everything is present and correct and as it should be. When you arrive in the boxing ring and calling time out, trying to stop things to get it on your own terms, I just don't think that has a place in the sport of boxing. That's why the referee is there, because as she was adopting that time out posture that they use in cricket, well, I think Casas would have been well within her rights to help herself to a free shot. I just think it's a very dangerous tactic indeed. I saw it happen in the action yesterday in the light flyweight division for men, if memory serves. And a 
Woodburn just helped himself to a belting bolo shot to the body when his opponent tried to call for time. While well, she's continuing to fiddle with her equipment, but again, without wishing to sound or be harsh, this is what her and her team have to take care of before they arrive in the boxing ring. It's a whole multitude of responsibilities that the athletes and the preparation teams have, making sure the equipment is in place and the correct size and as it should be, making weight, of course, doing the recovery, the prehab, to ensure that the bodies are fit and ready to go and they can carry out or demonstrate the conditioning that they've built up in training camp. And here on the global stage of a youth championships, there's Chowdhury coming forward with an aggressive two-fisted foray, bustling punches to the body from Casas. But all of these are stepping stones because we will undoubtedly, or these boxers undoubtedly, have ambitions to compete at the elite level on the continental and global stage among the seniors. And all of these experiences will be building blocks as they continue to strengthen their foundations in preparation for the transition through to the elite senior ranks. Well, there's confirmation of a clean sweep across the board for Arand Hattie Chowdhury. 10-9 in her favor from all of the judges. Some of the action from that first round. Second out. Second round. So this battle of reigning national champions goes into the second round. Difficult mission for Castas to try and get inside the longer arms. Chowdhury looking to be aggressive and get onto that front foot and snake out that right jab once again. Castas took her second youth national title earlier this year, adding to the one that she won in 2019. This, the biggest tournament of her career, as she's put on the end of a 1-2-3, the final right hand from the South Korean Red. A really clean, crisp shot. Right hook lands for Casas. Or she dropped down with an attempted shot to the body. Child, we're looking to reciprocate in that regard. She was looking for her own right hand around the rib cage. Solid left cross landed by Chowdhury during that coming together. Nice double right hand landed by Chowdhury and then a left cross. The right hand saw her go down to the body and she's looking to go through the defenses of Casas with combination punches here. Casas trying to bob and weave her way in. Nice left hand to the body landed by the woman in red once more, turning her palm upwards and just digging in that shot. On the midpoint of the second round, Casas showing plenty of commitment as she continues to come forward. Left jab on the upward trajectory wasn't too far away. She did score with the shot on that occasion. Looking to turn the left hand into an uppercut now was Chowdhury. So Casas back into the pocket to try and find her punching range. Bobbing and weaving out of punching range, but not much head movement when she's in Chowdhury's compass. And that's why Chowdhury has been able to catch her as she's coming in. Oh, that's a bolo shot to the body with the left hand from Chowdhury, which was a cracking punch. Whipped it in right into the solar plexus of the woman in blue. Tries to work her way back in once again, but she's met with a right-left combination. And without the head movement to slip these shots or a double-phase attack to 
get through the first if you're not going to move your head and then come again with the second. It's been a pretty difficult second round for Cassas as she takes another right jab just before the belt. Chowdhury with a very effective display indeed during the course of that second round, so much so that it's been scored 10-8, a clear round for Judge E. So into the third and final round then. And Cass asked. Two-time national champion of Colombia, the boxer from Bogota, has it all to do because she's conceded the opening two rounds unanimously. There was a good right hand landed by Casas, but she was caught as she was letting it fly. A little bit disorganized as she backed off to the neutral corner on the far side of the ring from our commentary position. Chadri recognized that and jumped all over her. There's the left hand out of the southpaw stand, stance, whipped into the torso once again by the continental bronze medalist. Casas working away to the body on the inside, and that's good to see because she's been made to be second best at long and mid range. Chaudhry flicking out a right jab, and again, Casas taking the opportunity to try and let her hands go at close range. Nice movement from Chaudhry. Getting onto the front foot now, trying to drive Casas backwards. The referee allowing the two boxers to work it out amongst themselves during that coming together. Oh, that's a nice right hand landed by Casas, looped it over the top. And I think the headdress beneath the head guard of Casas is going to require some attention. Well, that's one way to do it. Just divest the boxer of the swimming cap that she wore to keep her hair in place. And a quick shove says, get back to it. We're approaching the midpoint of the final round. But again, in addition to the spirit and friendship, <laughs> friendships that are formed during the course of these tournaments, make no mistake, these individuals are competitive as well. Casas won't mind that one bit, being sent back out into the freight in a bid to try and progress through to the quarter-final stage. Remember, only nine boxers lining up to contest the women's 69-kilogram welterweight division. That's in complete contrast to the men, where it's the most populated weight class, with 36 boxers taking part. So this, the only bout that is taking place in this round of 16 stage. Nice double right hand once again. Hook to body, then head. Landed by Chowdhury. And I don't think Chowdhury will mind one bit having an opening contest. The manner in which she's controlled it gives her something of an advantage. She'll be used to the atmosphere when the 69 kilogram welterweight tournament resumes on the 19th of April. And that left hand to the body has been a really effective shot for the woman in red. Well, Cass asks, you have to admire her commitment. She has never stopped trying, never stopped coming, never stopped competing. She takes a right, she scores with a right hand upstairs. She only began boxing in 2016, and the golf in experience evident over the course of the three three-minute rounds here. And it's the woman who's competed on the continental stage before, Arundhati Chowdhury, who will go through to the quarterfinals. Some of the action from that third, third round. Again, wherever the tape is stopped, you can see that it's Casas trying to come forwards and close the distance. 
she didn't have the wherewithal to avoid the punches coming in her direction. Here's the verdict. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this bout by unanimous decision is the boxer from the Red Corner, Arwan Hadi Hondon Hare, India. So there's confirmation of a unanimous points decision victory for India's Arundhati Chowdhury. She goes through to the quarter-final stage. Clear points winner. Taking every round for all of the judges. A five-point margin for Judge E. Such was her dominance. Leonaria Casas deserves credit for hanging tough and continuing to compete Bounce from opening bell to last. She's eliminated. In a round of 16, the first preliminary round at welterweight. Men's welter, 69 kilograms. Into the red corner, please. And now we turn our attention from to the men's 69 kilogram welterweight division. And this first contest between boxers from Slovakia and Greece. And his opponent in the blue corner, representing Greece, Maimetis Dimitros. Judge assignment, Judge 1, Moldavia, 2, Kyrgyzstan, 3, India, 4, Argentina, 5, Singapore, referee, Mitro Lazarev, Ukraine. So here then the five scoring judges who will take their seats around ringside for this one. They're from Moldova, Kyrgyzstan, India, Argentina and Singapore. There is Ladislav Orvath from Slovakia. His opponent, Dimitrios Maimaitis, going for his second bout of Kielce 2021. Dmitrio Lazarev of Ukraine is the referee. Head guard just being fitted to both of the boxes will be checked by our third man in the ring. Oh my goodness, what a start to this 69 kilogram welterweight contest. The boxer wearing red, Ladislav Horvath, has come out bombing. The Slovakian representative, part of a four man Slovakian boxing team, his opponent, Dimitrios Maimaitis, competing in his second bout of Kielce 2021. Not tagged by a left hand, but Horvath spoken to about. Rabbit punching, or holding around the rear of the head. Nice right hand landed in pot shot fashion by my mightiest. He's up on his toes now. Remember, he's had the experience of competing in ring A here already. It was a hard fought contest where he prevailed on a 3 2 split. Feet get tangled up as he landed a right hand. And both boxers really committing to their punches, particularly with the right, with the backhand. So plenty of fainting with the lead hand before. Oh, that's a beautiful re reverse, what, excuse me, reverse one, two, an orthodox one, two. Left hook, right hand landed. But there's a nick beneath the left eye of my Mitis. There's a swift left hook, arcing right hand landed by my Mitis as he looks for the lead right hand once again. Oh, there's a beautiful right cross picked by Mamaitis. Part of a three-strong Greek boxing team. He one of two men, along with a woman we just saw earlier. Here in the fifth session of boxing, Antonia Janakopoulou, who 
was competing in the 54 kilogram bantamweight division. But my Mitis moving confidently around the boxing ring. Ordovath going in pursuit of him, looking to target the body with his own arcing left hand. Just over two minutes gone in this opening three minutes, and the corner are going to have to address that nick beneath the left eye. The Greek boxer wearing blue. He was short with the right hand and almost countered as he fell in after not finding the range with that backhand. Ordovath. Again, look at how they commit, really plant their feet into the canvas and look to get leverage onto their shots, particularly the backhand. It's almost an all or nothing approach from these guys. It's a half left uppercut. That's nice defense with a left glove from Horvath after he found himself out of position. Made like he was answering a telephone, put the left hand up to his ear and kept the shot at bay, repelling it effectively. My goodness, that's a physical opening three minutes here in the 69 kilogram welterweight division. And it is the punch picking of Horvath that has taken the opening round 10 9 across the board. Well, I think my might is consider himself, can consider himself perhaps a little bit unfortunate there because Horvath was certainly aggressive. But my might is scored with some really eye catching backhands on a couple of occasions, such as that combination there. Clean, crisp work coming from the boxer in blue. But he's lost a close opening round, 10-9, for all of the scoring judges not getting a share from any of the observers here. But he's, he's, even though he's conceded the opening round, make no mistake, he is certainly in the contest. Second please. <laughs> Round two. So into the second round then. Dimitrios Maimaitis conceded the opening round. It's another explosive spring into close range by both boxers, resulting in a rather untidy coming together. See the extent of that injury beneath, beneath the left eye of Maimaitis. Hard right hand dug in by both boxers as they continue to launch these shots. Full blooded intent. Oh, wrestling on the inside, no working away. Ordovath looking for the right hand again. Dropping down to the body was Maimaitis. His right hand off target, landing on the shoulder. Nice success on the inside with arcing punches from Ordovath. Oh, that's a good right hand, but a far more solid response coming from Horvath. It was my Mitis who initiated that exchange. But Horvath effectively said, OK, I'll see you and raise you. Hold this. And his right cross was more solid. Looking for that same shot once again, the way he dips that back leg, boring in with the head there. Behind his high-held gloves. Nice left hand landed by Horvath. So approaching a minute to go in the second round. Looking for the backhand once again is Horvath, is my Mitis. And it's a rapid fire backhand that he possesses. I wonder whether his coaches will tell him to use the left jab more, just as he did there, but he takes a hard shot from Horvath. Both of them really looking to land power shots almost with every blow. Not much touching taking place to pile up, to pile up points. It really is winding up on these shots, particularly Horvath. But my might is not far behind him in that regard either. So closing seconds of this second round. 
Nice right hand landed by my Mightis. Game increasingly scrappy that one as we went through the second round, but one suspects, given how the first round was scored, it's going to be a clean sweep of the board once again for Horvath, and there is confirmation. Might is not really finding the range with any consistency. During that second round. Second out, please. Round three. So into the third and final round then. Dimitrios Maimaitis. 2019 Greek national champion, 70 kilograms, trailing by, trailing for every judge here. 2018 across the board as the hook's really winging in. They may well be landing with the inside of the glove, but they're coming with plenty of force and leverage. The two boxes stood on top of the logo. Again, looking to launch that backhand with everything behind it is Horvath. You can see he's got it locked and loaded, ready to launch, but he's not really using the left hand to set it up. He's flicking with it and then just committing everything to the right hand. My might is employing a similar tactic. There's a good left hook landed by my Mightis during that exchange. As he continues to hook away from the left flank with the boxes at short, close range. Nice work to the body from my Mightis, trying to tuck up tightly his Horvath. My Mightis, a tall athletic. 69 kilogram welterweight. Just wonder why he doesn't utilize his jab more. In a bid to set up his power shots at mid and short range. Of course, each and every box will have their own style. And it's a style that they have to be comfortable with. Just like the Operators who choose to box with their hands down. Textbook won't suggest that, but if that's how some people are comfortable with their boxing, if that reflects their personality, very difficult to take them out of it. You'd be almost trying to teach them how, like trying to teach them how to jump off the opposite leg. And if you've ever tried that during conditioning, you know what a difficult endeavor it is. Get a left leg and long jump to try and take off their right leg probably going to be a significant decrease in distance. So at the elite level, of course, and some athletes have done that with terrific success. Kept athletes Jessica Ennis and Denise Lewis spring to mind who had to learn to jump off other legs during their seven event discipline after sustaining an injury to their preferred jumping leg. But this contest has become more and more untidy as it's progressed. Not the most pleasing spectacle aesthetically, but it's going to be Horvath who will go through to the round of 16. Probably in unanimous fashion. There's plenty of activity, but not the quality that both boxers were going in search of. Competitive spirit, absolutely nothing wrong with either of these boxes in that regard. Just not able to sustain any clean punch picking during the course of the three three minute rounds. But a hard four to fear, no doubt. Both of these men will know that they've been in about tomorrow. Let's get the verdict, which we'll probably see Horvath progress. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this bout by unanimous decision is the boxer from the red corner, Ladislav Horvat, Slovakia. So Ladislav Horvat with a unanimous points decision victory over Dimitrios Maimaitis. Maimaitis won his first round, his first contest in the round of 64 to get through to this round of 32 here. But the man progressing to the last 16 is the Slovakian boxer, Ladislav Horvath, with a unanimous points decision victory. My mighty is battling back to take the third round for three of the judges, but it's Horvath who goes through. Ladies and gentlemen, bout number 101. Enrique Menswelter, 69 kilograms, into the red corner, please welcome boxer from Venezuela, Perdomo Rice, Rafael Antonio. And his opponent in the blue corner, representing India, Sumit. Judges, Judge 1, Malaysia, 2, United States, 3, Taipei, four, Kazakhstan, five, Italy. So we've got judges Referee, from Malaysia, the United States Veronica of America, Chinese Taipei, Hungary. Kazakhstan, and Italy seated around the boxing ring, scoring this one using the 10-point must system. Veronica Sooks of Hungary is the referee. Now she'll check the equipment of both boxes. Gum shield in place, protective cup, head guard fitted as it should be, and that final reminder to listen to the instructions. Round one. So we're underway then. 69 kilogram welterweight action between boxers from Venezuela and India. Boxer wearing red. Venezuelan representative Rafael Perdomo and a standing count issued immediately because of the rapier-like punching landed by Summit. First bout of the tournament for both of these boxers. Summit has come out with aggressive intent in the right hand. Looking to be a really effective shot against Perdomo. Steering left jab snaked upwards and then Fully committed right cross, followed by a left jab once again. So Podomo just looking to get his legs beneath him and try and get his way into this contest. He's in with an incredibly aggressive punch pickup in, in the form of Summit. Good double right hand. Summit turning the uppercut into the torso and then a right hand over the top. Left jab landed by the man in blue. Podomo, while looking to box off the ropes, but he's not yet found his range or rhythm, and the heavier artillery appears to be coming from the man in blue. Summit spoken to about hitting and holding. Oh. 
Looking left, jab landed by Summit and a left right once again, followed by another single shot success. Just disrupting the boxing stance of Perdomo. Two minutes gone in the opening round. And Perdomo hasn't really got himself into the contest. He's got to react soon because he's in danger of being overwhelmed here. Again, backed up by another jolting left hand. Being manhandled in many respects. That's the second talking to, talking to in Summit's direction. And of course, that can often be a significant factor in developmental sport, in age group sport. Here we are at the youth ranks. And just about everybody as Summit lands a beautiful left-right combination. It's about everybody who's been through high school. I know that there are some individuals who were shaving at the age of 12 and didn't grow any bigger. Whereas some guys don't start shaving until they're 21. This is for athletes born in the years 2003, 2004. So they're going to be at different stages of development physically. And right hands continue to crash home. Well, time called because that binding came loose from the glove some time ago, but that's coming at a timely moment for Podomo because he was being shaken up by some right crosses. There's a nice left hand to the body from the man in red. But my goodness, that was a dominant opening three minutes produced by Summit, the Indian boxer wearing blue. Look at that, 10-8 for four of the five scoring judges. Summit in complete control, bringing about an eight count. Podomo in danger of being caught cold during that opening round. Some of the action from that first round. Very aggressive start by Summit. And Podomo just never really given the opportunity to get his boxing going. Second out, please. Round two. So into the second round then. Can Podomo do something different after enduring a pretty difficult three minutes in the opening round of this welterweight contest? Oh, that's a solid right cross once again landed by Summit. Left hook causes Podomo to lose his balance because he was looking for a shot as well. He appears to be on the brink of getting a count here, being backed up, being put on unsteady legs. And that is the second standing count issued by the referee from Hungary. And Podomo, he's been, indeed, he's been stopped because his balance betrayed him there. Sent reeling backwards across the ring. Summit with some exquisite punch picking. Terrific shot selection, plenty of variety. And he completely ran over his opponent from Venezuela. And he goes storming through to the round of 16. Youth boxing, remember. Summit, 18 years of age. Perdomo, 17 years of age, but with no disrespect intended. In many respects, it was like a man against a boy. Summit set out his stall, set about his man, and did not give him an opportunity to get into the contest. RSC round two in favor of Summit from India, and he goes through to the round of 16. We'll see him in action again in three days' time. What a performance. Ladies and gentlemen, winner of this bout by RSC second round is the boxer from Blue Corner, Summit, India. Well, Summit, with a very impressive display of effective aggression right from the opening belt. He set about Podomo from Venezuela. First bout of the tournament for both of these men. And Summit made short work of it, prevailing RSC round two. And it is he who steamrolls his way into the round of 16 see him in the evening session on the 18th of April. And again, it's going to be a short interlude here because 
Aiba taking the decision to start bouts at a prescribed time rather than roll on as has been a custom in Aiba tournaments over the years. So we'll leave you just ahead of this short intermission. Stick around because there's plenty more action to come. Another six bouts remain in the 69 kilogram welterweight tournament here in this fifth session of boxing. But we'll leave you with images of the stoppage produced by Summit. Aggressive, accurate, sharp shooting to prevail RSC round two. Well, you can see the volunteers in effect just ensuring that all of the ropes and the corner posts and corner stalls are wiped down with disinfectant. That'll be our next contest. It's coming in about just over four minutes time because we have had a stoppage inside the second round. And with Aibra electing to start bouts at prescribed times rather than roll over, that is why we're going to have this short intermission here in ring A. And he's the man that has brought about this intermission. Summit, broad across the shoulders, muscular across the chest, and he used those attributes to bludgeon his way to a second round stoppage and go through to the round of 16. They're delighted, but make no mistake, he and his coaches will be aware that there is plenty more work to do. But that gives you a flavor of what is taking place backstage here at the Halat Leg Legionov. Athletes warming up, some athletes celebrating. And while we've been just highlighting the work that the local organizing committee and Aibra have done in staging this tournament in safe conditions, we should also just make a nod of acknowledgement, doff our cap to the volunteers because the local youth of Kielce have really done a fantastic job giving up their time and making sure that everything runs smoothly. The instructions, of course, are from the local organizing committee. But the youth of Kielce, as Summit breaks into a beaming smile and shadow boxes for the camera, the youth of Kielce have done a fantastic job as, volunte of, as, volu as volunteers, making sure things are where they need to be, when they need to be there. Equipment for the athletes, and you saw them scurrying around the boxing ring with incredible efficiency, making sure that all of the ropes are wiped down on all four sides of the ring, the turnbuckles in the corner, the corner stools as well. You've got a whole army of volunteers hoovering the canvas in between sessions. Really has, is being staged in pristine conditions. Boxy the Eagle, national bird of Poland, but the mascot here is nicknamed Boxy can see that likeness emblazoned all over the arena. So just a short break here at ring A. And over in ring B, you can still peep action taking place. It's my colleague Andy Clark commentating on that one. Well, we've mentioned the fact that this is the second successive tournament where men and women youth tournaments championships are being staged concurrently and in the same venue, in the same city at the same time. The men's youth world championships first staged in Yokohama in 1979. It's the 21st edition of the championships for men, seventh edition for the women, the first event held 10 years ago in Antalya in Turkey. So it really does have a long, rich history, this youth tournament, originally called the Junior World Championships before switching to its current name, then its new name, in 2008 when the event was held in the Mexican city of Guadalajara. It really does provide a magnificent building block for athletes who have gone on to achieve success in both the elite level of Aiba style boxing, on the global stage, the Olympic stage, then of course as professional as professionals, the last undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis, prevailed in this tournament. And you always hear about the completeness of his education when he speaks, and when people ponder, well, why has nobody else managed to accomplish undisputed status? 
in the heavyweight division in the pro ranks. And we always hear him mention the fact that, well, it was a really complete education that he had. Two-time Olympian, remember, eliminated by Terrell Biggs in Los Angeles in 1984 before coming back four years later and defeating Terrell Biggs' compa compatriot Riddick Bo Bowe in the gold medal bout. But Lennox Lewis enjoying success in the World Youth Championships, World Junior Championships as they were back then. When you consider that he went on to take Olympic gold and then work his way through the ranks, well, it really does speak to the completeness of the education that Lennox Lewis was able to earn himself. Felix Savon, another boxer who has stood on top of the podium here. Well, here, I say here, he's not going to be in Kielce, unfortunately, although he still does make appearances on the global boxing stage, but his world success as we take a look at some of the action on the steady cam from Ring B. But he, a gold medalist at 91 kilograms, when the aforementioned Riddick Bow took gold at 81 kilograms in the World Junior Championships in Bucharest in Romania in 1985 at the third edition of the World Junior Championships. Lennox Lewis's success coming in the championships before that in the second edition in Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. So that just gives you an idea of the caliber of boxers who have stood atop the global podium here as world youth or junior as it was back in the day, gold medalist. And so who knows which of these boxers from the men's and women's tournaments we are going to see in the future cementing their status as Hall of Famers, as all-time greats, and if you're watching our live stream here, wherever you happen to be tuning in from, well, so often a glimpse of future greatness. A summit just going through a warm down after dispatching of his opponents in the second round. Just a few moments away from our ninth bout of the evening here. And we'll leave you just to enjoy these images as to what is taking place backstage here at the Halep Legionov in Kielce. Ladies and gentlemen, bout number 102 in ring A, men's welter, 69 kilogram, into the red corner, please welcome boxer from Ukraine, Yuri Zakaharyev. And his opponent in the blue corner, representing Italy, Manuel Lombardi. Judge assignment, one Scotland, two Czech Republic, three Singapore, four Croatia, five Kyrgyzstan, referee Tina Politan, Bosnia and Herzegovina. 
Well, there are the five scoring judges who will be ringside for this one. They're from Scotland, Czech Republic, Singapore, Croatia, and Kyrgyzstan. Round one. So the action resumes here in ring A. We're in the 69 kilogram welterweight division and this one between boxers from Ukraine and Italy. The boxer wearing red is the highly decorated Yuri Zakariev. He's looking to set about his man, the boxer wearing blue. Manuel Lombardi from Italy. Both of these men, 18 years of age. Zakariev comes in with a glittering resume, bursting with domestic title success, a continental gold medal credentials as well. 2019 European Youth Champion, Zakariev. Left jab landed for Zakariev. Lombardi managed to avoid the follow-up right hand, but Lombardi gets with a good right hand of his own and once again, sharp punch picking, but look at the response from Zakariev as he lands with a right hand of his own. Beautiful left jab from Zakariev, very well timed indeed. Lombardi just up on his toes and out of punching range. Zakariev fainting with that lead foot, looking to score with that snaking left hand once again. Good right cross, but then look at the exchange of right hands. My goodness, that was rapid fire, straight punching from both boxes. Zakariev looking to whip in that right hand around the belt line of the man in blue. There he drops it down in straight fashion. Lombardi looking to counter as he looks to target the body, but turned into a kidney punch. Immediately spotted by the referee. So flailing right hand, just glancing the torso of Lombardi from Zakariev. Lombardi scoring effectively with his own right cross once again. But look at that lightning quick left hand from Zakariev as both boxers are engaging in terrific exchanges. Quality punch picking, lots of use of the jab in evidence. Correct punching as well as look at that left-right combination from the man in red. Lombardi keeping his composure, blocking that attempted shot to his body and then covering up effectively to repel the punches directed at his head. Good right hand whipped in by Zakariev, who then comes back upstairs and has repeated right hand success. In close succession, targeting the body well. And there's a nick. Is that a nick beneath the right eye? No, I just thought for a moment in my ringside commentary position that there was some reddening on the right cheek of Lombardi. 10 second clapper, indicating the closing seconds of the opening round. A very good round of high skill, hence the show of respect as the two boxers just touched gloves before making their way back to the corner, but quite rightly so, a 10-9 clean sweep in favor of Zakariev, but a very skillful opening round that was competitive as well. Come 
lo devi girare il gancio per farlo. Come lo devi girare? Porca puttana, e allora fallo. Second out, fallo. please. Cingolo. Round two. So into the second round then. Nice straight right score to the body by Zakariev. Ukrainian boxing team just one shy of full strength. Nice double left hand right cross and now he's really getting to work with that leave left hand. I said come 19 strong to the Ukrainian squad. Full size squad of 10 boxers for the men. Nine women as Zakariev scores with a rapier like left hand once again. And Lombardi cannot evade this jab which has increased in tempo and accuracy in the first minute of this second round. Lombardi, part of a 15 strong Italian contingent. Seven men, eight women, but he's been put under significant pressure here. Terrific pot shotting from Zakaria, then employing the layback to make Lombardi fall short. Lombardi comes back with a hook to the head and then to the body with the right with the right hand. And Lombardi is putting up the right hand to block the hooks, but he's being picked off by straight punches repeatedly. As Zakariev has really quickened his punches here. He took the opening round unanimously, but he's putting a clear distance between himself and Lombardi through this second stanza as we approach the midpoint of the round. Really isn't giving Lombardi a chance to get into the game, and Lombardi's punches, while well, they're becoming slightly more pendulous now, they're looping around when he's attempting to get out the straight shots. And in the opening round, they appeared far crisper but he has been tagged repeatedly by Zakariev through the opening half of the round. Zakariev turning in a nice left hand into the solar plexus of the man in blue. Trying a right uppercut himself is Lombardi, but he was off the mark by some distance. Oh, that's a cracking left uppercut landed by Zakariev, and then he's turning it into a left jab once again. Right hand success from Lombardi. Zakariev asserting his control in this second round. Takes a left, scores with a left right after taking a shot from Lombardi. Drops down to the body in a bid to bring those hands down and open up the head. And Lombardi may well have been hurt, just backing away. Giving himself some time to recover. Comes back into the fray with a right hand lead. But he's picked off again by the most fundamental shot in boxing, the lead left hand. Oh, the left hand attempt to the body, just strength low. That's a wicked right cross landed by Zakariev. And how about that for flashy punch picking? Right hand to Bolo shot whipped into the body. Zakariev in complete control from opening bell to last during that second round here. Magnificent display. Could well be some 10 8 scores. Such was his dominance. And there's confirmation four of them. As Zakariev just cranked up the intensity, Emmanuel Lombardi struggling to remain in contention. He was bossed during the course of that second round, and he's got it all to do as we prepare for the third and final three minute frame. <laughs> An example of some of the shot selection and variety evident in the work of Zakariev. Second out, please. Round three. Oh, Manuel Lombardi, spoken to about punching incorrectly as he launched that big single to try and get himself the big round that he needs. Because he conceded the, fight, the preceding round 10-8 for four of the five scoring judges. Only judge A scoring it 10-9. Corkscrew left hand landed by Zakaria, content to remain on the ropes and use his feet to dance his way back to center ring. Zakariev continuing to show terrific imagination and variety on top of the textbook punches. His left and right are arrow straight 
when he puts out the jab cross combination, then bending at the waist like a limbo dancer to avoid the counter, skitting across the rope, solid right cross landed once again. And Lombardi, you've got to credit this man's competitive spirit because he's continuing to go in pursuit of victory. But he's a distant second best here. Oh, that is exquisite punch picking from Zakariev once again. Down to the body with a right hand after a cluster of punches. It was a successful raiding attack for the man in red. Snaking left hand on an upward trajectory was a corkscrew shot from Zakariev. Lombardi lunging after his man, not able to find a success with his range. Still, he comes forward, but look at the toll he's having to pay in his bid to get inside. And again, when you're being picked off repeatedly like this, your own accuracy can decrease. And that is the fate that is befalling Lombardi here. Simply cannot get to grips with the 2019 European Youth Champion. And in stark contrast, while Lombardi is being peppered from all angles, Zakariev just able to relax. And when you're relaxed, your gas tank doesn't deplete. Feel as though you can do this all night. And that is what Zakariev is demonstrating here. Whipping right hand to the body. Then upstairs with three shots. Left, right, left. And he's really enjoying himself up there in the boxing ring now. Not taking any risks, though. Remember, these are 69 kilogram welterweights and they pack a fair amount of pop. How about that for a defensive maneuver off the ropes? to cause the shot to the body from Lombardi to be reduced to a glancing blow. Terrific hand speed from Lombardi and the nose damage continuing to increase. The ringside doctor is being called up to inspect confirmation. That fist into the palm that this injury has been caused by a punch. So in the event that this injury caused the bout, causes the bout to be stopped, it will be Zakariev who prevails, RSCI. A fair blow causing the injury, the ringside doctor inspecting the damage, and of course, health and safety of the athlete paramount. But Lombardi nodding in the affirmative that he's okay to continue, and he will at least be able to end the contest on his feet, but my goodness, he's been put on the periphery of a two-horse race here, such as being the dominance of Zakariev. An absolutely brilliant display of boxing from Yuri Zakariev from Ukraine. A competitive first round was swept 10-9, but then as the contest progressed, as soon as we entered the second round, Zakariev just put an increasing amount of distance between himself and his opponent. And in the end, he turned this Round of 32 preliminary welterweight contest into something of an exhibition, showcasing his skills magnificently, wonderful variety, both offensively and defensively. And Lombardi, well, he deserves considerable credit for sticking to his task because that final combination or that previous combination we saw was just the contest in rounds two and three in microcosm. Here's the verdict. Ladies and gentlemen, winner of this bout by unanimous decision is the boxer from the red corner Yuri Zakahariev Ukraine well there is confirmation of a unanimous point decision victory by massive margins for all five judges Yuri Zakariev from Ukraine the 2019 European champion opening his account here at Kielce 2021 with a dominant display, 10-8 for four judges in two consecutive rounds. Let's give credit to Manuel Lombardi for sticking to his task doggedly, but Zakariev, a clear and decisive winner in unanimous fashion. He goes through to the round of 16. Ladies and gentlemen, bout number 103 in ring K. Men's welter, 69 kilogram. Into the red corner, please welcome boxer from Spain, Sergio Martinez. And his opponent, representing Finland, Sergio.
Sam Moravati. Judge assignment. Judge one, India. Two, Taipei. Three, Moldavia. Four, Hungary. Five, Ukraine. Referee, Manuel Virarino, Argentina. Well, they're the five scoring judges presiding over this one. India, Chinese Taipei, Moldova, Hungary, and Ukraine. Are the nations from which the judges hail. Oh, he's got a famous namesake who wasn't too bad a boxer, was he? Argentinian maestro, Sergio Martinez. Absolute beautiful boxer to watch in and around 160 pounds. Manuel Valerino. From the same nation as the aforementioned Sergio Martinez. Round one. So we're underway then. This contest being fought between boxers from Spain and Finland. The boxer wearing blue is nicknamed Sergio. Well, he's not nicknamed. His name is Sergio Martinez. His opponent is the Finnish boxer operating out of the southpaw stance. That is Sam Moravati. Moravati to get onto the front foot, take advantage of his height and reach. Nice right jab landed by the boxer in blue as Martinez. Martinez tries to edge his way forwards. Nice left cross landed by Moravati. Heavy combination thrown by Moravati and he whips in a left hand to the body of the man in red. Busy with his hands is Moravati, not really accurate. Martinez. Bobbing and weaving his way forwards and scores with a good lead left hand. The right hand that followed with a scoring shot as well. Nice defensive maneuvers to make Moravati miss. And then Moravati put on the end of a straight shot. Nice left jab once again by the man in red. Jolting right hand landed on the retreat by Moravati. Snaking left hand scores for Martinez. Flailing punches at short range, but there's a crisp right hand over the top landed by Martinez. Moravati with a jolting right jab as he's backing up, but he's picked off with a right cross as he was swinging with his left. Left cross landed, but it was partially blocked by the glove. That right jab did get through the defences of Mar Martinez. Martinez just guilty of pushing out a rather slow one-two. Moravati looking to get onto the front foot in the closing stages of this round before skipping backwards and to his left. Looping overhand right, missed by some distance from Martinez. And a good left hand score to the body by the Spanish boxer. 
Oh, shots exchanged after the bell. And again, competitive teenagers here in action. Moravati taking it for all five scoring judges. 10-9 in favor of the boxer from Finland. Some of the action from that first round. Seconds out, please. Round two. So into the second round then. Moravati, who swept the opening round unanimously for all five of the judges, 17 years of age, facing off against his 18-year-old opponent, Martinez from Spain. Boxing effectively on the back foot, and he's walking Mar Martinez into punches. Just spinning off the line and trying to land that southpaw right hook is Moravati. Part of a six-strong boxing team from Finland. Evenly balanced between three men and three women, but he's put on to the end of a left-right combination there, and that causes him to initiate a clinch and hold on. Martinez, part of a, a nine-strong Spanish boxing team. Six men and three women. Both of these men in their first bout of Fielza 2021. And it's untidy at close range. And remember, it was Moravati who initiated a clinch after taking a hard left right while his back was to the ropes. Just wonder whether he's been shaken up by that, but look at the use of that educated right hand, whipping it around the corner on the final shot of that cluster. Moravati appears to be feeling the pace midway through this second round. Body shot wasn't too far away from the man in red. Plenty of inaccurate work from both men now. And again, it's punctuated by another clinch. And Moravati has been spoken to about his responsibility to engage. And I just wonder whether the energy levels of Moravati are dipping and he's not going to be able to show his skills here because he appears to be out on his feet, now complaining about a low blow. Distress signals coming from the man in blue. He's got 40 seconds to make it back to the blue corner. Martinez appears to be far sharper. Oh, and that's a good right hand over the top, catching the fatiguing man in blue. He was tagged again, falls into his man, clinging on, wrapping him up like a blanket, and just waiting for the intervention of the referee. Moravati's gas tank draining at a rapid rate almost sitting down on the ropes and a standing count has come around and Moravati my goodness well he demonstrated enough skill in the opening round to take it 10-9 well a warning oh my goodness wow well what a turnaround what a turnaround let's just put that into context because Moravati was coming about apart at the seams from about the midpoint of that second round. And then he took an eight count. For my money, he was on the way, if not to being stopped, but at least getting a 10-9 round against him, maybe even 10-8, such was his dramatic collapse. But look at that, it's 10-9 for four of the judges in favor of Martinez but, Martinez, but he's got a point taken off, so he can get no more than nine. So effectively, that round, 9-9 for four of the five judges, and for Judge B, it's actually 10-8 because a point has been taken off the scorecard of Martinez. So that point deduction for not listening to the instructions has completely turned this contest on its head.
because for my money, it should be even. One round apiece, but the rules have to be obeyed. We're into the third and final round. Is the minutes intermission, has the minutes intermission been enough for Moravati to recover? Because look, he's still on unsteady legs. He can't really keep his boxing stance beneath him. He's gamely trying to keep himself in the contest, but Mart Martinez has got to keep his composure. Issued a warning for not listening to instructions, but look, the similar posture resumes. Moravati not demonstrating the conditioning required to demonstrate or showcase his skill set. And again, there's a saying in boxing that a journeyman who's in shape will beat a champion who's out of shape. I'm not suggesting that Moravati hasn't trained hard for this. He was tagged in the second round, which we mentioned in commentary. And since that point, well, he's really struggling to keep his boxing stance. And that's another talking to in his direction. A warning may well be forthcoming. Nice right jab of the flailing variety landed by Moravati. But he's swaying around in the neutral corner just above our commentary position here. And he can barely stand up. He's got half of the round to negotiate to make it through to the final bell. He takes a hard right hand to the body and a left hook around the corner. Moravati demonstrating incredible desire. But you can see he's been visibly shaken up by his exertions here. Both his efforts to land a punch and to try and avoid the punches. Oh, well, I'm not sure what more Martinez can do in that regard. He's looking for his own offense against the fighter who's fading in front of him. Moravati dipping beneath the belt line. He's going to have to watch he doesn't cop a warning for that. And look at Moravati flailing visibly by the second, using his opponent as a leaning post. Can't stand up, charging him across the ring. And really, well, uh, how many times is he going to be spoken to? Surely some, something should be done about this. Because Martinez was hit with a warning in the second round. And Moravati is spoiling here. And I don't think it's intentional. I just don't think he has the energy level to do anything else. Now he's trying to get back to distance and fake his way through the final 30 seconds. Breathing, his cheeks swelling and decreasing like a set of bellows almost made a trip to the canvas there as he looked to pivot and spin off the line but Marti martinez can't take advantage works the body of the fading fighter in front of him runs him into a single shot and it looks as though moravati well he's going to negotiate his well way to the final belt and given the way that second round was scored when he was fairly dominated by martinez well he may well have nicked this one but I think that second round, the point away, remember that was 9-9 for four of the judges. And given that Moravati swept the opening round 10-9, that put him rather ironically in an advantageous position as we entered the third round. So what or how have the judges scored this one? Marti Martinez has probably taken the third, but is it going to be enough? Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this bout by split decision is the boxer from the blue corner. Oh, and it's Moravati. Well, he's Finals. found the energy to do a dance of celebration, but a split decision winner. And look at how close it was on the scorecards, but that warning for this in the second round for not listening to instructions in a portion of the contest when Martinez was in complete control has completely changed the complexion and indeed the result of this contest. Moravati taking the third round, 10-9 for three of the judges, but you have to conduct yourself within the rules, Martinez. Martinez not judged to have done that, and that warning in the second round hurtful indeed to his chances. Moravati, credit to him for hanging on in a contest where he was fading visibly by the second. Belarus, Jan Krukowski.
and his opponents representing Armenia, Narek Zakaharyan. Judge assignments, Judge one Kazakhstan, two Bosnia and Herzegovina, three Italy, four United States, five Singapore, referee Maslan Amzah Bin, Malaysia. Well, here are the judges for bout number 104, the 11th bout of this fifth session of boxing, Kazakhstan, Bosnia-Herzegovina, Italy, United States of America, and Singapore. Maslan bin Amza from Malaysia is the referee. Ahead of our 11th bout of this evening session here in Ring A. Round one. So 69 kilogram welterweight action, the first of a scheduled three three-minute rounds. This one between boxers from Belarus and Armenia. The boxer wearing red is the Belarusian representative Jan Krokuski. His opponent representing Armenia is Narek Zakarian. Nice corkscrew left hand landed by Zakarian. Nice left jab landed in that cluster by Krakuski. Turning southpaw now is Zakarian. Scoring with a left cross. A nice left jab landed once again by the boxer in red. Zakarian back in your orthodox stance and did have a single shot success. So switch hitting in evidence from the Armenian boxer who's back as a lefty once again. Beautiful counter right hand on the back foot landed by Zakarian. Remember this the most heavily populated weight division in the entire tournament, 36 boxers taking part. So this contest still in the round of 32. The winners looking to progress through to the quarterfinals as both boxers score enjoying that exchange. Nice left jab landed by Zakarian. Turned south for once again. Just look to lay a trap for Krukuski. Spinning off the line and getting back to the space of ring center. Here's the man in blue. Beautiful up jab. Turned his palms to the ring lights and just speared the defenses of the man in red. Big backhand launched by Krukuski. Zakarian looked to counter. Looking for a counter right hand was Krakuski, but it didn't find the range. Closing seconds of the opening round, right-hand lead out of the orthodox stance, scored by Zakarian. Very good round of boxing, particularly from the man in blue, whose punch-picking was accurate. 
edged it only for two of the three scoring judges. It was competitive, judges A, B and E, referring the work of Krakuski. So both boxes demonstrating nice shot selection during the course of that opening three minutes. Seconds out, please. Round two. Into the second round, then. Arik Zakarian, the boxer in blue. European Junior Championship bronze medalist in 2018. The youth ranks, he was a quarter finalist a year later. Took a share of the opening round, 3 2, in favour of the man in red. Both boxers demonstrating educated lead hands. The lead left for Krukuski. Zakarian, a switch hitter. Cutting left hand landed with the inside of the glove and the wrist from Krukuski. He comes forward with a three-shot salvo. Oh, that's a beautiful right hand around the corner from Zakarian. Really swiveling the head of Krukuski and checking his chin while he's been spoken to repeatedly about turning his back and this could well be a warning in his direction and there it is repeatedly turning his back so that means in this round irrespective of what happens Krakuski can score no more than nine because if he wins and he takes another right hand around the corner if he wins the round in the 10 point must system it will be 10 minus one effectively he can sco score no more than nine and in the effect that he loses the round 10, 9, well, it's going to be 9 minus 1, which is 8, as he's fed another stiff left jab. He's aware of that, and that is why he's upping the tempo and going in pursuit of Zakarian. But he was spoken to repeatedly about turning his back. A gum shield has been dislodged now, and that is from Krukuski. Well, remember... If this gets dislodged in a repeated fashion, that can be another warning. So the problem's piling up as the Belarusian coach taking the opportunity to do some coaching while rinsing and reinserting the mouthpiece. So time has been called as our referee from Malaysia has to go and get some hand sanitizer after picking up the dislodged mouthpiece of Jan Krukuski. COVID-19 protocols in full effect here at Kielce 2021. Oh my goodness. Well, this time it's Zakarian who turned his back. And Krakuski, just concerned for him that he doesn't continue to invoke the ire of the referee. He's already been doctor point for turning his back. Then his mouthpiece was dislodged. But it was Zakarian who turned his back resulting in that awkward posture between the two fighters. Oh, beautiful left hand out of the southpaw stance, landed by the man in blue. Good right hand to the body, landed by Krukuski, but it was countered by a shot upstairs from Zakarian. Well, the shot's going long from Zakarian as another untidy tangle ensues. Well, remember, Krakuski can score no more than nine, and that's in the event that he won the round. Could well be a split as it was in the first, but whatever score Krakuski gets will be minus one. And the 10-9 round in favor of Zakarian puts him in a commanding position because that's effectively a 10-8 round across the board. So even the 3-2 split that he conceded in round number one has been overturned by the 10-9 score, the 10-8 scoreline effectively, 9-1. 
But a more effective punch picking of Zakarian. Seeing him in a commanding position going into the third and final round. The Krukos, Krukowski has got it all to do. Second out, please. Round three. So we're into the third and final round. Jan Krukowski of Belarus has conceded the second round heavily because he lost it 10-9 for all five judges and then was doctor point for repeatedly turning his back on his opponent. Zakarian hitting on the break. Kuski, part of an 11-strong Belarusian squad here in Kielce 2021. Nice left jab landed by the Belarusian representative. Nine men and two women make up their rank. That means eight men and two women making up the Belarusian squad. Nine men and two women in the 11. The contingent of Armenia. Well, there's Zakarian turning his back. And remember, he's been spoken to about that in the second round. Seeing that this referee won't hesitate to take a point or issue a warning. He has to speak to the boxer repeatedly about the same infringement. So Zakarian. He takes a good right hand and the mouthpiece has come out once again. Now, this is the second time and again. Krakuski has really got to watch how he conducts himself here. Because if he comes out one more time, well, there is stern admonishment in his direction. Hand sanitizer is going to be required in these COVID-19 conscious times once again. But if that mouthpiece is dislodged one more time by a punch or otherwise, it is going to be another point away off the scorecard of Krakuski. Oh, my goodness. Well, you've got a feel for the young man. Because three occasions it's come out, and again, it's part of the responsibility of the boxers and the teams to ensure that the equipment fits correctly. And that mouthpiece wasn't coming out because of punches. It just kept flying out because it's ill-fitting. So here we go. There's the warning. Two warnings issued against Krakuski. Now more hand sanitizer has to be applied. And safety protocols follow to the letter here in the bubble at Kielce 2021. But Krakuski, well, he's been the architect of his own downfall in many respects because he was competitive against Zakarian. But then in the second round, excuse me, earlier in the contest, he was Dr. Point for continually turning his back. And then Dr. Subsequent Point because the mouthpiece has been dis dislodged on three occasions. And that may seem officious, it may seem harsh, but the rules are clear and they are the same for all boxers. The teams and the boxers must ensure that the mouthpiece is fitted correctly. If it's getting dislodged by cracking punches from the left and right hand of your opponent, that's one thing. But the reason it's an infringement is that boxers can use it as a tactic to buy time. If they're under pressure, they dislodge the mouthpiece. The referee has to call time, rinse and re reinsert it after a trip to the corner. And all of that is precious seconds for a boxer to replenish his energy levels. And that is why it is not permitted to have the mouthpiece repeatedly come out to, war, to ward off that type of gamesmanship. That isn't what was occurring here. But Jan Krakuski, well, he's been eliminated having picked up two warnings, one for turning his back, the second for repeated dispelling of the mouthpiece. And he is going to be eliminated here in the round of 32. It will be Zakarian who goes through. Yeah. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this bout by unanimous decision is the boxer from the blue corner, Narek Zakharyan, Armenia. So, Narek Zakhar Zakharyan, a unanimous points decision winner. But look at that. Two warnings issued against Jan Krakuski. And it is the man from Armenia who goes through to the round of 16 comfortable margins in the end and he the 2019 national champion bouts number 100 round of 16. k welter 69 kilogram into the red corner please welcome boxer from japan yamamoto ryoma And his opponent in the blue corner, representing Moldova, Guji Vladislav. Judge Assignment, Judge One, Kyrgyzstan, Two, Croatia, Three, Czech Republic, Four, Taipei, Five, Argentina, Referee, Mitro Lazarev, Ukraine. So they're the judges who will be the arbiters of this one. Kyrgyzstan, Croatia, Czech Republic, Chinese Taipei, and Argentina are the nations where the judges come from. Mitro Lazarev of Ukraine is the third man in the ring. He'll be the referee in this one. Round one. So we're underway then. This one between boxers from Japan and Moldova. Oh, what a blistering start by the boxer in red. Ryoma Yamamoto going after the taller figure wearing blue. But accurate. Oh, that's a cracking left right combination landed by Yamamoto. The 17 year old showing no respect for the reputation and accomplishment of Vladislav Gudzi. Highly decorated boxer representing Moldova. But Yamamoto coming out aggressively in the opening 30 seconds of this open of this first round. Vladislav Gudzi just trying to establish his own straight punching. Banging away to the body with both hands is Yamamoto. And again, he's not giving his man any room to breathe. Looking to bring the uppercut into play is Goodsy, and that's an idea of his experience and ring craft. Always an effective shot against a more compact boxer. You can catch them as they're coming in. But Yamamoto look, looking to give Goodsy any time to settle as Goodsy lands a couple of good right hands, and the second one caused Yamamoto to lose his balance. But Yamamoto comes back with a solid right cross of his own. It's the first bout of the tournament for both of these boxers and Yamamoto into the habit of celebrating his successes by raising his gloves. Goodsy looking to turn that right hand into a looping shot around the corner. Yamamoto banging away at close range, but he's doing so after pulling down and then landing with the inside of the glove and the wrist. Snaking right hand was a cracking punch from Goodsy. Turned it upwards, 
turned his palm upwards and found the range. Rapier like right cross is on target as well. Yamamoto backing the taller figure to the ropes. Nice left jab landed by the more compact figure. There's the right hand success from Goodsy once again. But look at the timing on the jab of the shorter boxer wearing red. Nice punch picking off beautiful footwork from Goodsy. And again, left hand is an eye catching shot. And now Goodsy beginning to celebrate his successes. Nice right hand once again, and then on the retreat, right uppercut, left hook, a cracking shots on the inside from the taller figure in blue. But look at the two-shot success from Yamamoto. Give and take action in the opening round of this 69-kilogram welterweight bout. Oh, Yamamoto is a rough customer indeed. He's been boxing at this tempo since the opening belt. Marched across the ring, went in search of his man. What a contest we have here in this 69 kilogram welterweight preliminary round bout and a split, a fair reflection of what took place because Yamamoto started quickly, had pot shot success, but then Goodsey kept his composure, began to find his range and demonstrated some wonderful movement and shot selection. Action packed three minutes of high skill as well. What do you prefer during the course of that three minutes? Second out, please. Round two. So into the second round then, a 3-2 split in favor of the man in blue. Vladislav Goodsy and look at him get to work behind straight punches now was perhaps caught by surprise by the rapid raiding attacks being launched by this front foot boxer wearing red. But as the round progressed, he began to find a range and that is the result. Found the measure of his man and picked him off, picked him off sweetly. The right left combination bringing about a standing count. And that's terrific to see that adjustment from a boxer who was put under significant pressure in the opening round. Yamamoto, plenty game, but Goodsy, far more experience. Been on the continental European medal podium since the schoolboy championships and comes in here as a 2019 European Championship youth silver medalist, having got a bronze as a junior in 2017. And you're seeing the demonstration of that experience and ability here, not flustered in the face of this effective aggression being launched by Yamamoto. Wasn't naked, blind aggression as Yamamoto tries to get himself back into the mix with a stiff left jab. But look at how much more difficult his task is proving to be here now. Because whereas in the first round as he walks into a right uppercut, in the first round he was getting into range and finding punches from both flanks as he bustles away to the body, but here, Goodsy has made the adjustment, has found his range, but Goodsy takes a stiff left jab, even though Yamamoto is considerably shorter. The shot was timed very well indeed. <laughs> Yamamoto not looking to work away as incessantly as he was in the opening round when he gets into close range. But Goodsy has just adjusted magnificently to the skill set of Yamamoto, and all of a sudden the mission for the Japanese boxer far more difficult than it was proving to be for him in the opening round. Nice left hand landed by Yamamoto, and again as he scores with the up jab. Looking to long bridges man now is good as he straightened his left hand, then he got inside Yamamoto and he did work away to the body. But that action reciprocated by Goodsy. Yamamoto having the final word with shots downstairs. Arcing right hand around the ear landed by Yamamoto. But Goodsy only electing his feet when he chooses to. And how about that for a right uppercut out of the neutral corner just above our commentary position. Beautiful punch, exquisitely picked by Goodsy. 
Right hand on the inside once again. Yamamoto looking to launch another attack, but runs into the heel of the right glove of Goodsy. Goodsy demonstrating terrific coolness up there under fire. A very good round of boxing and a terrific response from the man in blue. Remember, he edged the first round 3-2, but responded superbly to sweep the second round across the board. So it is all square, 19 points apiece, one round apiece for judges A and E. But shot selection like that saw Goodsy take control of the second round. And he's up 2018 for judges B, C and D. And the momentum is in his favor. Wonderful variety of punch demonstrated by Goodsy. And Yamamoto's effective aggression was neutralized for what was effective aggression in the opening round and neutralized for large portions of that second round. Second out, please. Round three. Well, the floor cleaning crew still in action here. At the Leginov Hall. Hence the call of time from the referee to ensure that all of the paraphernalia was out of the ring and the only objects that remain inside the strands are the two boxers and the referee. There's a good right hand from Yamamoto who will be, a, who will be aware that he conceded the opening round across the board and that is why he has come out in bustling fashion to begin this third and final round. But he's met with a man, Goodsy, who has found his groove here now but that didn't help Goodsy to evade the right cross that came over the top from Yamamoto. Oh, what a shot from Goodsy, and it visibly dipped the knees of Yamamoto. He was keen to hold on, a right uppercut, left hook, and right hand crashes home. Yamamoto looking in the direction of the referee, perhaps hoping that a standing count will be forthcoming. But Goodsy landing a cracking punch that sags Yamamoto at the knees. Half his senses recovered, he steps back into the pocket and lands a stiff left jab of his own before being run into a single shot once more. Just over a minute gone in the third and final round. And another right hand causes Yamamoto to wilt, stopping him in his tracks. The impact doubled up because he was coming in. And now he's been issued a warning for not keeping his head up. So his problems mounting by the second here. Standing count in round two, being picked off superbly here in round three. And he's been given a count as well. So again, whatever score he gets at the end of the round as he walks into another right uppercut, left jab, and another uppercut. No standing count forthcoming. His determination as he's biting down into his gun shield and coming forwards may well be hastening his own demise here because the impact of these punches from Goodsy is being doubled up, catching the man in red as he's advancing. His head swiveled from side to side once again, and Goodsy in complete control and also has the insurance of a point that has been taken off the scorecard because of the warning of Yamamoto. It's been a torrid round so far, endured by the Japanese boxer, nowhere near as experienced as Goodsy was a participant in the 2019 Asian Junior Championships, the 17-year-old. But Goodsy has increased his dominance the longer this contest has gone on. And look at the way that Yamamoto is being stopped in, on his forward march by the accurate shot selection, where he's demonstrated a wonderful variety, Goodsy. And he's turning this one into a masterclass through rounds two, and particularly here in round three. While well, Yamamoto continuing to compete, continuing to go in search of the shot that would bring about the stoppage that he needs, but he's not going to be able to find it. And it will be Vladislav Gudzi, who veritably storms into the round of 16 with a terrific display. There was the right uppercut that really put Yamamoto on unsteady legs. And look at how he was just being knocked off balance by the accurate punch picking of Goodsy, a tremendous performance and a contest that was close in the first round was turned into something of a procession in rounds two and three 
from the 2019 European silver medalist. Terrific performance by the man in blue. Let's get the verdict. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this bout by unanimous decision is the boxer from the blue corner, Vladislav Gudzi, Moldova. Well, there's confirmation of a comprehensive unanimous points decision victory in favor of Vladislav, Vladislav Gudzi. He goes through to the round of 16. And it was a very good display. Competitive opening round. A 3-2 split in Gudzi's favor after Yamamoto came flying out of the blocks. But then Gudzi just got the measure of his man and pecked and poked his way towards a unanimous points decision win. Yamamoto docked a point for failing to keep his head up in the third. But what a prospect he is, a 17-year-old. No lack of fire in that particular fighter. Bout number 106. Ring A. Mansuelter, 69 kilogram. Into the red corner, please welcome boxer from United Arab Emirates, Nehia Nehiadra. So our penultimate contest. We'll see boxers and his opponent United in Arab the Emirates corner, and Jordan facing off. Jordan. Al Sadi Anas. Judge assignment. So they're the Get judges one. who will Moldavia. be scoring Two. this contest. Italy, three, Bosnia and Herzegovina, four, Hungary, five, Argentina. Referee, Rai Ravi, Scotland. Ravi Rai of Scotland will be the referee for this bout. Round one. So we're underway then. Boxers from the United Arab Emirates and Jordan are contesting this one. And the man wearing red is the representative of the UAE. And he has come out bombing away with that right hand. And neither boxer listening to the commands. Ravi Rai having to raise his voice to be heard here at the Hala Legionov. My goodness, what a start here. Marauding attack launched by the boxer from the UAE, Hayadra Nehayan. So Anas Al Sadi having to have his head guard adjusted, but that is a stern admonishment from Ravi Rai in the direction of Nehayan of the United Arab Emirates. Looking for that looping right hand over the top again. Well, he's a physical individual. You can see that in the first 40 seconds. Hayadra Nehayan. He keeps looking for that right hand over the top. 
Robingham weaving his way forward, but look at him fairly bowling that shot from his right shoulder. Nice reflexes to make the taller figure and as Al Sadi miss. There's that same shot once again, telegraphing that, chasing after his man, and again, winging that right hand over like that, bowling it effectively. And it's landing with the inside of the glove rather than the correct knuckle part of the glove. Landed on an, up, on an upward trajectory once again. Al Sadi. Trying to establish his own straight shots, but he's been met with an incredibly aggressive opponent from the United Arab Emirates. Now the uppercut trying to be brought into play by Al Sadi. And again, this habit of calling timeout isn't something I agree with. Second time in the round that the head guard has had to be adjusted for the Jordanian boxer. So timeout has been called. You can see that the coach, the second in the Jordanian corner, having difficulty. Oh dear me. Because that's not safe. Let's listen in to Ravi Wright. So he's been sent to the neutral corner. So the supervisor has been informed that the head guard is ill-fitting. I don't know if it's a problem with the fastening or the fitting. It seems as though the fastening doesn't have any adhesive quality to stay in place. So time has been called. Now what's going to transpire here is an alternative available. But you must have the correct equipment and head guards are part of Aiba boxing at the youth level. Command of box has been issued. It's another swarming of offensive assault launched by Nehayan. Oh, nice shots underneath by Al Saadi. But look at Nehayan, fairly ball rushing his man and claiming him around the waist. And Nehayan being warned about lifting up his legs, but I'm not quite sure what he can do when you've got a man charging at you like that. Nice spearing right cross, wasn't too far away from Al Sadi. Looking to measure his man now, but not really finding the range with his attempted straight punches. And again, he's complaining about the chin strap on his head guard. Here's the man in blue. Well, an incident filled round. Took about five minutes to transpire. 3-2 split in favor of Nehayan. Judges A and E preferring the work of the Jordanian boxer wearing blue. Seconds out, please. Yeah. Round two. So to the second round then. First round edged on a 3-2 split in favor of the man in red who is doing nothing but swinging for the fences with that right hand. Yeah. 
Oh, this is three times. I think this head guard has been adjusted. Oh, that's a beautiful right hand landed by Nahea, and he's landed it once again, backing up the boxer in blue. It really is a fully committed shot, all or nothing. Oh, my goodness, but what a counter right hand, and it has completely wiped out Nahea. The referee Ravi Rai dispensing with the count and calling this one off. We have got a KO inside the distant victory and we have got to hope that Nehayan is okay. Well, it was a dramatic conclusion to this contest. And the doctor immediately into the ring to check on the welfare of the boxer in red. Contest. Really committed to that right hand, and he was having success with it. There's an example, but walked into that right hand, caught him right on the chin, and brought about an end to the contest. Completely wiping out. Resistance of the man in red. One well, muted celebrations out there from Anas Al Asadi. A single shot finish. And again, we have to hope that Mehayan is okay. Well, it's good to see him moving. But he still appears to be on unsteady legs, so all of the checks and safety protocols will be followed here at Kielce 2021. Adra Nehehan stopped in the second round. But more important than the result is the welfare of the teenager from the United Arab Emirates. Understandably, concern over in that blue corner. Well, there's the right hand success that Nehayan was looking for, but it was a right hand that he moved into. That saw him suffer the knockout here in the second round. Oh, 
شوفني شوف من هيا ها شوفني شوف صبعي هذا وين وين صبعي وقت شوف صبعي شوف بعينك شوف بعينك عادي عادي شوف تشويش هذا بتروح يلا دوم بطل بطل بتروح بتروح خلص خذ نفس خلص 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 مش بالا اباك اباك تقول شكل خلاص والله فوق يا اخي اباك تقول لما تروح الدوخه اباك تروح عشان ما تروح ترى نحكي ها Well, all of the checks and protocols being carried out by the doctors who are present here at this two ring operation at the Halep Aginov in Kielce. <laughs> And he's produced a terrific shot to bring about an inside the distance victory and you can bet that Anas Asadi and his team want to celebrate in exuberant fashion but they're showing respect for their opponent who has just been stopped Nice to see that show of respect between the two boxers after that contest. And the round of 32 in the welterweight division. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this bout by knockout is the boxer from the blue corner, Anas Al Sadi, Jordan. And here's confirmation Anas Al Sadi. Winner by knockout in the second round, eliminating his opponent from the United Arab Emirates, Ayadra Nehe Nehehan, stopped courtesy of a single right hand. It is Al Sadi who goes through to the round of 16. Bouts number 107 in ring K. Men's welter, 69 kilogram, into the red corner. Please welcome boxer from Cuba, Lafos Paul Denne Landes. And his opponent representing Czech Republic, Milos Beranek. Judge Seidman, Judge 1, Kazakhstan, 2, United States, 3, Bosnia and Herzegovina, 4, Malaysia, 5, Singapore. Referee, Valery Pastuchov, Moldavia. So our final bout of the evening sees referee, officials rather from Kazakhstan, United States of America, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Malaysia and Singapore. Sat ringside to score this one using the 10-point must system. This one being contested between boxers from Cuba and the Czech Republic. Valery Pashutov of Moldova is the referee in our final contest of the evening.
Round one. So we're underway then. The final bout, bout number 14 of this fifth session of boxing is between two 19 year old 19 year olds. Man wearing red, the taller figure is Danny Lafos Polk, Cuban national champion in his second bout here in Kielce 2021. Prevailed on a hard fought 3 2 split over Marco Verdi from Mexico on the opening day of competition. Boxed beautifully, but was also tagged repeatedly by a rapid fire southpaw left. He's facing another southpaw here today, and that is Milos Baranek from the Czech Republic. He, too, national champion of his homeland. Multiple titles under his belt over the years. Very experienced operator. Lafos Pol in his first major international competition. But you can see as he gets to work with that flicking left jab against the southpaw that he is a very accomplished operator indeed. Again, having boxed here once already, it's a contest we appear to get to grips with it. But then, by operating in his characteristic hands down low style, the rapid fire left cross checked his chin and brought about a standing count in that contest. And he edged it on a 3 2 split, 29 28 for all five judges. And yeah, but there you can see an example of his punch repertoire. But of course, this game not just about giving punches, it's how well you can evade them. And if you have to take them, how well you can take them. And even though he was boxing with his hands down by his side, his reflexes didn't betray him. He just couldn't get out of the way of the rocket launcher left hand. That his opponent from Mexico was unfurling. Marco Verdi with a cracking left cross, crashing home repeatedly. Baranic. Looking to get to work with his own lead southpaw right here now. Nice cutting right hand landed around the corner. Baranek looking for that shot. Takes a right hand to the body from Lafos Paul. Lafos Paul just inching his way out of distance as he turns a right hand bolo shot just above the belt line. There's evidence of a left cross success once again. Lafos Paul whipping in another bolo shot to the body. So you can bet that the coaches of Baranek will have watched the opening contest of Lafos Pol as the Cuban boxer goes downstairs with another whipping right hand to the torso. Looking for the same shot once more to the midsection. He's used that repeatedly and it's proving to be a profitable punch. Very good round of boxing. Both boxers enjoying successes. But greater variety and repertoire and indeed volume landed by the man wearing red started more quickly Baranek coming into the contest in the closing stages and he has taken it for judge b a 4-1 split in favor of the cuban at the end of what was a competitive opening round some of the action from that first round Ticket out, please. <laughs> round two. So into the second round then. Nine men, excuse me, nine boxes on both of the squads of these nations. Cuba. No women boxers in their ranks. For the Czech Republic. It's a 5-4 split. Five men and four women. Nice left jab landed by Lafos Paul. Looking to get to work with a right-hand lead out of that orthodox stance. So Baranek looking to establish his southpaw jab. Nice bolo shot to the body once again. And then a straight right hand right down the pipe from Lafos Paul. And 
his physical at close range. And given his body punching prowess, I'm surprised Lafos Paul not looking to make room for that whipping right hand to the torso that he's been using to such success. Veneri used it, three shot combination. Body, head, body from the man in red. Lafos Paul onto the front foot now. As Baranek looks to go to the torso of the taller Cuban boxer. He scores with a nudging left hand to the body before disengaging and getting beyond punching distance. Oh, that's a vicious body shot once again. And look at the response as Baranek visibly dropped his hands and took a sharp intake of breath. All oh, these body punches beginning to take it out of him. His hands down by his belt line now. That could leave the chin open, but he comes back with two punches of his own. Oh, wicked shot to the body once again, and Baranek's being chopped down. He gamely bites down in his gum shield and fires back with two punches of his own. But hard, accurate, hurtful body shots being sunk in just above the belt line from Lafos Polk. Again, targeting the body with the final shot of that salvo. And again, another right hand turned underneath. And Baranek is becoming visibly shorter almost by the second. Like a jack-in-the-box being pushed down back into its container. The body shots just causing him to get more and more crumpled, trying to protect that torso. Look at him fiddling with his shorts, just trying to get some oxygen into those lungs. There's another right uppercut to the body and then left hook flashed around the corner. Lafos Paul with some really accurate and impressive work to the body in the second round of this 69 kilogram welterweight bout. Counter left cross sends Baranek tottering backwards and my goodness, that was absolutely beautiful to behold. Teenage boxers producing infighting like that. 4-1 in favor of the Cuban boxer. Not quite sure how you could score that round for Baranek. Given the punches he absorbed, particularly to the body, just like that. Those reminiscence of a veteran of the prize ring of over 10 years. Look at the skill, the accuracy, just how he turns them underneath. What an attribute to have as a 19-year-old. Absolutely sensational. Now, how is Baranek? What type of shape is he going to emerge in Second for the start of this third round? Because that was a beautifully brutal display of bodywork from the man in red. We're into the third and final round. Has the 60-second interval been enough for the man to recover? And another body shot sinks in, and it dislodges the mouthpiece of Baranek. Terrific body punching in evidence from Lafos Pulp from both flanks. But the right hand, look at that. Baranek just having to take a sharp intake of breath. Now Lafos Pulp will have recognized that because he's up in the ring. And I recognize that from my ringside position. How, what odds the man in red goes to target the body once again. Good work to the body from Baranek himself, but he's been outgunned in that department. Nice left hand on the inside, and Lafos Paul here in the third round, looking to turn up the intensity further. Nice lead left hand of the Czech variety as Lafos Paul goes downstairs with a shot to the body, but this time it's deemed to have strayed below the belt line. Spoken to by the referee about that infringement. Baranek trying to establish his lead right hand, catches Lafos Paul with a left cross out of that southpaw stance. Right hand to the body, left hook to the head, and you can see the pain and discomfort visibly etched onto the face of Baranek, who takes another hard right hand dug into the pit of his stomach. And Baranek continually being doubled over by the body shots, and he's had his chin checked by a shot upstairs, and again, this is a sustained burst of brilliant body punching by Lafos Pulp. Sustained pressure over the course of rounds two and three in particular, making this a very distressing experience as an uppercut is turned through the middle. Baranek is displaying some desire and terrific conditioning.
because each of these body shots is having an increasingly pronounced effect here at the Halep Legionov. Same shot once again, that leaves the chin open and that's why he was able to score with an arcing left hook. Uppercut dips the knees of Baranek in distress, mouthpiece dislodged and a standing count issued. It's come out for the second time. Look at him trying to straighten up and get oxygen into his lungs. Second standing eight counts of the contest. And the referee, well, he's deeming that it's okay to continue, but this is why the dislodging of the mouthpiece is an infringement. He's taken an eight count, and now there's more time for him to try and recover as it has to be rinsed and reinserted. Now, is this going to be a standing count for this infringement? Hand sanitizer has to be applied now for my money. That's two times. Indeed. And there's the final talking to about that infringement of the mouthpiece coming out. Now, it's been dislodged by punches here, not necessarily to the chin. But the shots being whipped into the body, just causing Boranek to exhale with such force that the mouthpiece was shoved out on that second occasion. And again... Lafos Paul continuing to target the torso of the man in blue. He's got 30 seconds to make it to the end of the round and have the warrior satisfaction of ending the bout on his feet. He's plenty tough, is Baranek, the man from the Czech Republic. He's still looking for the shots to try and compete. He scores with a left hook upstairs after he takes another shot to the body from the bruising, bustling punches of Danny Lafos Paul. This has been a quite magnificent display and something you don't often associate with boxers at the youth level. But Danny Lafos Paul fairly chopped down his man with unstinting work to the ribcage and torso of the man in blue. And Baranek, well, you can bet that his work of, uh, on the medicine ball will have paid dividends in preparation for this tournament because he was tattooed repeatedly to the torso and rattled around the ribs by some accurate, hurtful, spiteful body punching that was dug in over the courses of, course of rounds two and three in particular from Danny Lafos Pulp. Merciless from the man in red. Ladies Let's get the verdict. The winner of this bout by unanimous decision is the boxer from the red corner, La Fospol Dane Landis, Cuba. Well, there is confirmation of a unanimous points decision victory. Those are the scores. Not from the end of the contest, but from the middle of the contest after two completed rounds. Dane Lafos Paul in complete control over the course of that contest, and there is confirmation of a unanimous clean sweep of the third and final round to take it unanimously and progress through to the round of 16. Terrific punch picking, but the body shots notable from Danny Lafos Polk and a crucial component of his unanimous points decision victory. Well, that wraps up the action from ring A here on the fifth session of boxing in this evening session on day number three of Kielce 2021. We hope you have enjoyed it. Join us tomorrow for day four action in the AIBA Youth World Championships for both men and women. It just remains for me, Ronald McIntosh, on behalf of the rest of the team here to say thank you for staying with us and we'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.
I co, proszę pana? 